In episode 438 of the Clive Barker Podcast, Ryan and Jose are joined by Ed and Nina Martinez from Synobium and Joe Manko of Little Spark Films to go over 2023 in review. The best of 2023 in relation to Clive Barker stuff and the podcast, as well as what's been going on with us. We discuss the launch of our new interview book and Patreon in relation to our brand new and long overdue Fundraiser 10. All right, well, welcome. This is episode 438 of the Clive Barker podcast. And today we're doing 2023 in review. And we're also going to, um, afterwards, we're also going to talk about Fundraiser X. That's right. Which is our new fundraiser. 10? Yes. 10, correct. Yes. Yeah. And uh, as usual, I am Joe. We've got Ryan with us. No, you're Jose. We- I'm Jose. Yes. You've been Jose <laughs> for 11 years. We've all, We've got a guest named Joe. I know. <laughs> and you've been the only person who's been pronouncing my name uh, as close to how it really is pronounced. So thank you for that. <laughs> but we also got a couple of guests today joining us. We've got uh, director Joe Manko. And uh, hello, Joe. Hi. Great to have you here from Little Spark Films. And we've got Nina and Ed from uh, Synobium. And Ed, of course, is hello. our blind podcaster. I'm and your blind us- podcaster from the San Francisco Bay Area. Yes, Sign sir. Up. And the uh, director of Ultra Cyborg. No, Which not you... the director, but I was the special effects guy. Special effects guy. You <laughs> made that awesome suit. Co-writer and producer. <laughs> and oh, yeah, there was a big shout out to you on Monster Party not too long ago. Awesome. Like two episodes back, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really great shout out, actually. Yeah. Uh-huh. Very lengthy. Nice. Yeah. Because today... August Fragoni was one of their guests who's an expert yes. on Godzilla. And he was in our Ultra Cyborg film. Right, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's great. Along so Steve Wang, who created The Predator. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah, he plays he... Ultra Cyborg. He was oh, that's in right. high school. He was only like 19. Wow. Good times. When was that shot? Back in like early 80s, like wow. 82, 83. How did you edit that thing? Video to video, two decks, two VHS decks. <laughs> wow. A big glitch in between each edit. Sure. Yeah. Uh, as it happens, right. That's yeah. how I did the Kung Fu Dragons movies, too, was doing that that way. I so, left some of that in uh, for the, <laughs> the one we put up on YouTube. I left some of that video to video, that weird glitch, glitch glitches. Cut. Yeah. Cause and I thought so, sometimes the on the on the newer video, uh, on the newer VHS players, they started uh cutting out the static and making putting blue screen instead like that was I, better and it that was that made it way worse yeah you know what i used to like about tape was when uh, sometimes you would record something over another show and then the image would slowly we, like transition from yeah. one thing to the other with like a bit of static just going down the screen and almost that, like yeah. a special effect like, like a wipe bleep. yeah yeah, yeah. kids nowadays will never know that they don't even know what static is anymore my kid knows she wants a VCR for her room. Oh, that's really? great. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Hey, mm-hmm. uh, be kind, yeah. rewind. <laughs> I remember that. I've, I've been getting a lot of tapes recently. I've been kind of like taking out my my frustrations on going into VHS collecting website uh, groups and Facebook and buying tapes. I've been buying some interesting stuff. But um, yeah, so 2023 was a... Yes. a Pretty exciting year for Clyde Barker fans. And I think all of us had some, you know, serious changes in our lives and projects that we've been working on that finally saw fruition. So um, I think this is going to be an interesting year to go through and reminisce. Yep, I think so, too. I heard a robot. (laughs) All right. So uh, who wants to go first? We should have one of our guests go first if you want to. What do you think? Yes. All right. Joe, you get oh. started. Oh, yeah. hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm awake now. It's uh, 11.15 in Texas right now. <laughs> yeah. It looks so, like it's really cold there. It's 8.15 in Fairbanks. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how y'all do that. What time is it here, Nina? Uh, 9.15. 9.15. Um, no, yeah, it's cold here. Well, it's too cold for me. I it's mean, minus 40 here. Yeah, no way. That... <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> it's already frozen over. That doesn't work for me. 
if it drops uh close over you know about 40 under 40 then we all start freaking out so but so what was um, one of your favorite things this year yeah uh in 2023 my favorite thing was that i bought a house <laughs> uh um, same good freezies yeah yeah <laughs> um but uh now we uh we've done a lot uh in 2023, we uh, released Vice Mares. We had its world premiere at uh, Look Cinemas on December 3rd. Um, you know, what else? We, we've done a lot. I mean, I've been planning so much for uh, for Death World. I'm, I'm kind of at a loss now as to where, where uh, what I've did all, done all year. I do know that, uh, what is it, the, the Hellraiser box set, the new one, that was a cool find. The yeah. new release of Underworld, that was a cool find. I'm I'm more yeah. interested in my what I my fandom than, than yeah. what I've accomplished myself. <laughs> yeah, so let's start with the uh, the first thing you said uh, in terms of Clyde Barker stuff was the release of the Quartet of Torment, right? Yeah, with the uh, new, uh, well, it's got the new work print. You guys, yeah. uh, Bloodline from Bloodline. Yeah, what did everyone think of that? Well, I couldn't see it, of course, but from what I heard and descriptions to me, it sounded very interesting. Of course, I had been on set when they were shooting it you know and you still have some footage that uh one day we'll see the light of day yes yeah um i you guys privately first i i I lumped all of the 4k releases this year together into one big thing so that i could have five things on my list (laughs) so the nightbreed arrow 4k release and the quartet of torment and this Australian, which is not a 4K, but the Australian Lord of Illusions box set release. I, the I have that on the way, yeah. Yeah. I didn't buy that, but I think it's really cool, you know, and oh, lots yeah. of people are what excited about the company about that it. put that sh- uh, umbrella? Umbrella. Yeah. Speaking and, and... of the box set, I was wondering if what your thoughts were on the Pete Atkins commentary. I liked it a lot. I think uh, in the Quartet of Torment, there was a commentary track with peter atkins and stephen jones and another person that i might the name is escaping me now um and this is Kim, for hellraiser Kim, one he did Kim, he did he do new ones for all four well, no what I, i'm talking about is just this it's bloodline, for bloodline Milford. yeah but it was yeah. kim milford i think or kim that's it thank you yeah um so he's yeah a it was reviewer. he's a writer and a reviewer and stuff yeah it was pretty interesting i mean pete was talking about all his recollections from the film and stuff that he, uh, how how the production went and um, stuff like that and uh, the, the the troubled production, so that was an interesting uh, content to listen to and we, um, yeah, it was shock full of stuff, right? We we're even going to have people who did a a feature for that uh, box set soon in the podcast, um, yeah. so we're keeping that as a surprise. But uh, I, I really enjoy that blood bloodline work print too glad you, you know, said and... that you're keeping that for as a surprise because yeah. i almost blurted out you mean <laughs> <laughs> please don't <laughs> um <laughs> well but, sorry yeah, yeah no that was definitely just keep cool. it a surprise in case it doesn't happen but um what do yeah, you I think thought... of the work print uh joe um i honestly haven't gotten to watch it yet no uh, no wait. i haven't I, do you uh, do you have a 4K Blu-ray player already? I don't already, have the or? UHD Blu-ray player. Oh I, yeah, yeah. I got the because I've got all these uh, Blu-rays from Severin, and uh, the I never paid attention to whether or not I was playing the Blu-ray or the UHD disc. Right. And so I grabbed one of my Alex De La Iglesia movies, and I grabbed the UHD disc, and I tested it. I'm like, oh crap, I can't do it. <laughs> so uh, same with me. I had to buy a. A Sony player. Player. player, yeah. I went for like a relatively cheap one, but uh, I did get a Sony. And when I started watching that, I was amazed with the uh, the quality of the transfer and uh, all the film grain is still there. You don't have all that DNR, you know, making everything look smooth. Right. Um, but it, in some cases, like Hellraiser one and two, that has a lot of grain to the point where I was like, whoa. That is crazy. It's like I'm watching something with a little bit of static on, uh, behind it. We, wow. we we definitely get a little um, used to like the low quality of DVDs. And then when we see a 4K Ultra HD on a 4K display, it's kind of impressive, right? It's kind of like, whoa, 
This is the the sharpest I've ever seen. Maybe I really enjoy. Huh? Here's the portrait of Maybe Torment. Too sharp. And, uh, and no, I, not too sharp. Really clear though, but there is some noise uh, from the grain of the film, and I was pretty excited to look at that because I was like, "Wow, that's that's really something." You get to see the 4K in a 4K display. Not like yeah. the old VHS days, huh? Oh no, but that has a certain charm of its own, right, Joe? Yeah, it does. It totally does. I just got done watching the new uh, director's cut of Rocky the other day, Rocky Four, and the grain was insane. <laughs> uh like just it, it just the language of cinema how the it it helps set the mood for that film and uh i have a i have a french transfer of hellraiser 3 uh that looks way better than in my opinion the the scarlet box set arrow video transfer of hellraiser 3 uh and i think the level of the grain is works out perfectly well and it works better in the french uh transfer than it does the arrow transfer i think when we had josh milliken in the podcast to talk about his book septum he told us that he had been in touch with kevin yeager and i think it was kevin that said he had a work print right brian from bloodline yeah, yeah. recount that story yeah. if you guys got the right fact. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> stating that again in case someone missed that episode but uh, that came from kevin yeager even though it's not one of his director cuts um, it's 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 a cut that has some stuff by Joe Chappelle and uh, rewrites by Rand Ravitch. Yeah. And uh, it's different from the one that everybody already knew. Um, the one that's on the Internet, right? Yeah, the one that's on the Internet, the one that came out like in 2005 or something like that. Yeah. It, this one has new stuff. And um, so they gave this to him after he left the production, must have. I'm not sure about that. I, I would love to get in touch with him. Or, or he took it with him. How he got that. It had yeah. to be because the timeline, you know, the fact that Rand Ravitch and, and Joe Chappelle added to this cut, you know, and then he's right. got it. Well, you know. yeah, I mean, and and, and that this was just him supposing that, that it was provided by um, by the director, but we don't. I think oh, he does. Yeah, we, right. he didn't, he didn't really know. Came from like post-production. It's it. But it has stuff that we have never seen before in this work print, too. So that was pretty exciting to watch, you know, uh, scenes that were not in the original work print from 2005. I don't want to spoil it for Joe because he hasn't seen it yet, but I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised at the quality of the transfer, even though it's a VHS transfer, I'm guessing. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty sharp, like DVD quality. Yeah. Uh, not like that copy of a copy of a copy of the work print that we've had before. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't and, have those scene missing or effects missing cards or anything. And there's some redubs of certain scenes, which are much better done than in the original work print. And, where, and uh, they use, uh, they cut in music from Hellraiser and Hellraiser 2 sometimes. What about right. the fact that we now have a new little tidbit of information from Pete's comments about, you know, with Kim and those guys, the actor who plays the priest in the footage of the you know in hellraiser 4 the priest footage oh yeah was he he's the from, guy that was in... from the original black and white the thing from another thing. world yeah really? oh. he's, he's the guy with the the captain's hat Beard. or whatever right in the yeah, leather the jacket well he's one of the the men you know one of those clean shaven men who's you know fighting the thing you know in the movie. right Right. Yeah. And then he ended up coming back to a Hellraiser movie to play a holographic priest, which was pretty the fun. The full beard, right? He's got a big beard. In the in the work print? No. He's no? clean shaven. He's got oh. white hair, clean shaven. He's dressed in a priest's smock. I don't know if that's the proper word for it, but uh, he's sitting in a cassock. carved... It's a cassock. Cassock. Thank you. And he's sitting in a carved chair and the merchant is just talking to him about how he's uh, about to confront the ultimate evil, and he uh, he wants to uh, he wants to make things right because his ancestors uh, were responsible for building the box, and uh, and the holographic priest scene is uh, I think pretty good. I, I like the um, I actually like that part, even though it wasn't written by Peter Atkins, but I like the whole you know holographic priest in a spaceship kind of thing, and the way Merchant goes through the ritual of shaving his head and kind of puts also like almost like a cassock kind of thing as well to mirror pinhead uh, before the big showdown. Well, and yeah, nowadays it, it, chat GPT could totally answer questions like a holographic priest. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, speaking of that, I read yesterday that the G George Carlin estate is suing someone who put up a whole special um, using George Carlin's voice and written in George Carlin's style called I'm Glad I'm Dead. Oh, it's and not it, funny at all. Yeah, it's wow. on YouTube. I was listening to that a little bit. I was like, ah, this this kind of blows. It doesn't even sound like George Carlin. Yeah. But uh, what, yeah. What year is that? You know the the uh, space station sequence. What year is that supposed to be? I think it's twenty two forty seven or something like that. No, they'll have much better than Chat GPT by then. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of crazy how that kind of like artificial intelligence is um, evolving in the sense that you can now, you know, have just Warhammer forty k lore videos narrated by Sir David Attenborough. Yeah, and that's right. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I just imagine what it'll be like even just five years from now. I mean, not, you know, you can, I've heard I mean, that it's going to drop away. Like, in other words, the way that people are all fascinated with AI stuff like that, you know, right now, whether it's the writing program or the art program, that in a couple of years, two, three years, it'll all fall away because, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it's, I've seen predictions like that on YouTube about that. So, Ryan, you also mentioned the Umbrella Entertainment version of the Lord of Illusions, right? It's the one that came out with two Blu-ray discs. Yeah. Like five months ago or something. Yeah, I I just am excited about it just because um uh just because it's it's a new you know, new box set release of Lord of Illusions, and because the other one, the Shout Factory one, is out of print. Yeah. Well, the umbrella one, I, I've seen people selling this specific edition uh on um various websites uh i don't remember what they're called but they're selling this edition uh second hand for like 200 bucks but you can go straight to the website oh. the umbrella website and you can buy a 65 dollar uh bundle with the two blu-rays it has the theatrical and the director's cut and it looks like it comes with a book and some um uh, uh what are they called uh, lobby cards and yeah. alternate oh, yeah. cover yeah yeah you're talking about the uh, collector's edition umbrella entertainment they have two editions one of them oh. comes with the lobby cards the two blu-rays the slip covers uh two slip covers i think yeah and the little poster a poster of the lord of illusions with the two hands with the eyes like, yeah. in the middle comes with two posters yeah, and then the other one is Nyx, right? The painting of Nyx floating in like fire, and then these yeah. tarot cards uh, spread around him, floating in the air, right? With, like the Ten of Swords mm -hmm. and all those things that we uh, reference moments in the movie. Yeah, you can I'm get... also kind kind of annoyed with myself that I missed out on the underworld. Like, you know, we we kept on reporting that it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and then all of a sudden people went... were buying it, and it's I didn't gone. even realize that it had come out. It's still available to buy. Yeah, I need to buy it. It's not expensive at all. The Underworld. Uh, yeah. It comes with a UHD and a Blu-ray. And man, that movie, you can actually understand what's happening. <laughs> really? You can yeah. see the picture. You can hear the audio. It has <laughs> yeah. subtitles. And I'm like, yeah. wow, I've had this movie for 20 years already. And right. I didn't know this was what I was watching. Yeah. It's so, it was actually like, holy crap. I genuinely enjoyed the movie. Uh, I have. Oh, good. I, good. I'll, I'll be making the leap from Laserdisc. <laughs> it was. Uh, I it think. Was fun. Was in on DVD. Was the Laserdisc transfer? Is oh, was I? Mic yeah, a little bit. He did. Yeah. yeah Sorry yeah. about that. I was saying that. Um, the only transfer that existed on DVD was, I think, kind of a little overblown laser disc transfer that's not very good um and joe i think you got the vhs and the dvd of that too as well as the blu-ray right i don't have the dvd i i I, oh. I tried finding the dvd of it for the longest time and i eventually gave up because i think the uh, dvd is just a um is is only in europe and i think I, it's, uh, it's not yeah. region coded for the united states Every american dvd yeah. i found i speculated was a bootleg so i didn't yeah. buy I think my DVD is Region Zero, and it was one oh, of really? those European ones. So, oh, yeah. 
I'll, I'll and, check that and, and it's get like, back with you guys. It's like there was a Rawhead Rex DVD, but it was like only Canadian. It was a Canadian release, and it was like it went out of print really fast. And so you could buy used copies for like a hundred bucks. Uh, see, that's but sure. now you can get Rawhead right, Rex in, in like that. Now, now you can get Rawhead Rex in 4K from Kino Lorber. I mean, it's like I don't know why they did it, but I'm not going to question it. Like I love Rawhead you. Rex. It's so yeah, thank fun. you, Kino I, Lorber. I have it yeah. on VHS and DVD. Yeah, I love the monster in Rawhead Rex. Um, I just my favorite my adaptation. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I just sold the model kit of it. Yeah, is oh. that the one where he's uh, standing up with a with his hand up, and yeah. the, on the bottom there's like skulls near his feet? Yep. Yeah, I know, I know which one that is. That's pretty good. That's pretty neat. But what were the other releases that uh, physical media releases for Clive Barker last year? Those were the only three I was aware of. So Nightbreed, the Arrow 4K Nightbreed, I got uh, that. Quartet of Torment, the Australian, you know, oh, the Umbrella Revolutions. Yeah, yeah, and and the um, umbrella entertainment, Lord of Illusions. Yeah, and the Kino Lorber, um, Underworld, like we just said, the Underworld Kino Lorber, and I think Rawhead Rex was the previous year. Okay, I think that yeah, it might have been twenty twenty two. I still have to buy the Lord of Illusions Collector's Edition, and uh, uh, thanks for the shout out, Joe, because I do see that people are trying to sell that for ridiculous prices and it's still selling yeah. for $65 on the umbrella entertainment website. So Just I don't it, understand. Get it straight. Buyers the beware. Source. Yeah. Yeah. These you scalpers, know, man. And I know. Okay. And so there's this, uh, this person that I follow on Instagram, uh, called, a uh, uh, Katie video, K A D I video. And she gets licensing from, uh, like Hulu, Disney, 20th century, pretty much anything that's run by the mouse. Uh, to do physical, like uh, her own artwork and physical releases of their films. And one of them is Hulu's Hellraiser from 2022. What? Really? really? Yeah. Uh, she has a big box. Oh, here. Let me take my cans off real quick. Sorry. I actually found her on Instagram. I'm going through her slip cases now. They look pretty amazing. They're all like digital art painted and stuff. Wow. Uh, How did she get permission? That's amazing. I'm not sure. I just found out about it from Joe. And is this yeah. Well, she says in her bio and Sorry, Instagram, I had to go get it from my Some of my projects my are officially altar. licensed. Clients Joe, include... Joe uh, teased something and then ran off. Uh, so <laughs> I... this is a licensed uh, release of Hellraiser on VHS. Oh, so and, cool. And it's a big box. I and see it's it. The Hulu? It's the Hulu? It's the Hulu Hellraiser. VHS. Oh my That's god, great. on a big box? In a big box. Freaking weird. And she I'm does all the, right now. She does all the help uh the artwork herself. Uh-huh. She gets a lot of hate on so really? on on her Why? Instagram for her art. Why? It's just not people's style, but the the tapes work. The tapes mm-hmm. work. Uh and it plays it plays Get great. And... So talk. does she does she do them in their normal in their actual aspect ratio or does she cut recut them into pan and scan? You know, I don't even think it's pan and scan, which she does, uh, because uh, I'm just more concerned personally at being able to watch it in my bedroom on my tube yeah. TV uh, <laughs> instead of being able to have to watch sit in my living room and watch it repeated, you know, from on the flat screen. Oh, yeah. Flat. So uh, the picture quality is. It, I, I live through it. Uh, it's not really pan and scan when you watch <laughs> it. It's kind of like she takes the whole wide frame and squishes it into four three. And at yeah. first it bothered me, but you know, you just stop noticing it. And then I started so then to wonder. So like, stuff would be cut off then. No, it's not cut off at all. It's really weird in my So be. is it zoomed in or is it just squished? It, it's not zoomed in. It's it's kind of squished, so everything just looks slightly longer. But okay. after like, you know, okay. five minutes of watching the movie that way, I guess your brain flips over and is like, Oh, it's normal. I mean, Joe. I watched so I'm totally Joe, fine with it. Let, I want to contact this person because what if they, with the permission that they got to produce these tapes, you know, they could also put my, you know, interview on it or something like a special feature. I have no idea. Uh, I know that the movie plays twice on this tape. I'll just hit that's it and. Weird. That's weird. Yeah. It well, plays I mean, twice. It plays twice on the tape. But well, uh, you yeah. mean the movie ends and then starts over again? Yep. Oh, okay. But there, that, that means difference? there's room on the tape that we could put a documentary on there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, the tape's already been 
released. So, so I, I, I mean, mean, for future, you know, if, if yeah. I contact this person and they're interested and we work out a deal. Mm. Sure. Well, she does limited runs. So I think she, I mean, she, she sold this for like 40 bucks on her website. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's another edition that's not a big box. That's got a really cool cover as well. And she, uh, anyway, yeah, she sells yeah. them on her website and uh, they work and they're awesome. Looks like, uh, looks like they came out about 20 weeks ago. And um, yeah. she does say on her bio that some of my projects are officially licensed. Clients include Intrepid Films, Disney, 20th Century Fox, Buena Vista International, Shutter, and AMC. Well, and Disney owns Hulu. Hulu. Yeah. Disney. yeah. Disney owns everything, though. Oh, wow. Yeah, she does have some uh, some recent movies here. I'm looking at it on the Instagram. That's cool. Well, I'll uh, copy this and put it on the show notes. Thanks well, for what's letting interesting is that there's two physical media releases the one in the UK on DVD and now this one in VHS. Sure. Yeah. I have I would the, call I have this the a UK semi official. One. Yeah. Yeah. I have the UK DVD, but I mean, I can't watch it. So, I mean, that's why I was like, I'm taking the plunge, guys. I'm going to buy this because uh, I. It, I but because it's not all region, your player? Uh, yeah. No, my player is not all region, but I just specifically wanted a reason to have. I wanted to have a copy I could watch in my bedroom. <laughs> Right. I, I, and I'm I like, see. well, I already pay for Hulu. I bought this. I'm, I hope this works. If anything, I love the art. Cool. Well, so far, you guys have already brought up two of the things that I had on my top five list, which was the Bloodline Order of Tor Torment work print and the yeah, that was one of set. So. Um, and then you guys now are talking about the release in DVD of Hellraiser uh, from Hulu. And I have to say the one, one of my favorite episodes and one of my favorite events of 2023 was really um, when that came out in England on DVD. And we had an episode where it was titled Joe Eats His Shorts or Jose Eats His, his, eats his Shorts. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> yeah. I kept telling Ryan, like, oh, man, it's, Hulu's a streaming platform. They're never going to release that in if the physical format. If it comes out format. on DVD, I'll eat my shorts. Yeah. yeah. And then what do you know? In England, it came out in a bare bones release in DVD. And I was like, well, I guess. Yeah. But it's kind of debatable whether that counts or not. It wasn't a very good release. It's, it's like, like Herzog. He said that he would eat his shoe, his leather shoe. It's his, uh through a Paramount the, distributor. It's Paramount's the one that distributed that. The, oh yeah. The, to, the, uh, to the UK, you mean? The the UK DVD. It's a Paramount distribution. Yeah. Um. Gotcha. So I mean, I don't know what that means. Whatever they have in their deals or whatever, but UK. I always I thought it was kind of funny since the only the only um connection paramount has to um hellraiser is uh hellraiser 3 in america are so. they did they release it paramount released it or well they they released the dvd one in uk yeah it's just a distribution deal yeah so i don't know how that what their yeah. deal is but yeah they gave it to england but not us okay. but it premiered at fantastic fest in texas so. uh, that's cool yeah, what I, I was hoping you were grabbing a 4K Blu-ray. I'm sorry, D Joe, but I'm not going to be hooking up a VCR. <laughs> <laughs> I got three VCRs in my house. They each oh. their own. I do. I have two VCRs. One I of them have is a mono. Laserdisc player. Laserdisc is superior. It <laughs> is, and VHS I want is one. Inferior. All formats. Uh, uh, you were just <laughs> quoting the Transformers movie there, weren't yes. you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Laser disc is superior. Soundwave <laughs> superior, construct the constant feeder. I know yeah. that because I know that movie like the back of my hand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we had a, a bunch of cool releases. We had pretty much all of these Clive Barker movies coming out, like Nightbreed, Hellraiser, um, Underworld. Rawhead. Rawhead. R Rawhead already came out in 4K a couple of years ago or more. But then, you know, this this uh, Lord of Illusions collector's edition, yeah, people need to go check it out because it, it looks really amazing with all the posters and all the lobby cards that come along with it. And it's a two disc set. Yeah. And I never thought I would be having stuff like this come out eventually so many years afterwards. You, now you have stuff like the CD soundtrack, this is double CD that has all the cues. And now you have this Lord of Illusions 4K release with all these extras. And it's just so great because for the longest time, all we had was like DVD versions that were not very detailed, did not have a lot of extras or anything bare like bones. that. Yeah. yeah, very bare bones. And now I'm happy with what we got. So definitely a good year in terms of physical releases. 
And I never heard of this company Umbrella until someone started posting about this uh, release. Yeah. And uh, man, well, I'm excited. I I would imagine because up until now they probably made releases that were not region coded for our air region, you know, and now, uh, but you know, now they're probably, it seems like regions have been sort of, uh, like 4k, yeah, 4k aren't, aren't region coded. And so now these Blu-rays, they just made them region zero and maybe they're just, is Umbrella an Australian company? They're yeah. Australian, but Trauma has been doing region free DVDs and Blu-rays since the beginning of their, you know, existence. Everyone yeah. should. I wish everyone would do that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, these uh, Umbrella, I sent, I, I was apprehensive to get it and uh, I emailed, I emailed Umbrella and I got a response a couple of days later saying that. Now they assured me that uh, unless it has, it spe specifies on the website, which uh, titles have region codings and they're not going to yeah. be region coded. But sometimes their hands are tied. It has to do with, you know, who gets what kind of, you know, rights. It's licensing stuff, but, with yeah. regions. Like, in other words, worldwide, yeah. you know, territories. Some right. other company has the rights in a particular spot where you can't do it, you know. Yeah. yeah. And every little shred of footage they can find, they, they try to put that on these new releases, which is a, a great archival um, yeah. decision. Yeah, like the 4K four four disc box set. The there's you know stuff on there in that that uh, work print that nobody's ever seen before. Joe, you have a physical edition coming out soon too, right? I have uh, the Torturer is coming out on well VHS and Blu-ray eventually. Blu-ray, nice. <laughs> so yeah. we have uh, Anthony Galatis out in England. He's put together um, such he's a great put artist. Together the the package art for it so we should be having the the vhs is going to come out soon it's going to be a small run we're going to see how that goes and uh if it turns out it's a hit then we'll get some more made if not it will just kind of uh -huh. be a thing uh but yeah we're gonna have blu-rays also in 2024 uh you know and then we're at the same time we're doing this we're trying to make our movies and uh you know i'm um Hoping to shoot Death World in April. I'm going back to Indiana to direct season three of Gringo Fantastico Disaster oh, yeah. Piece Theater. On Troma Now, right? On Troma Now, yeah. I'm directing season three. I didn't direct season two, but I'm doing three. I did one. I did season one, and now I'm coming back for three. And then, uh, you know, we have um, two other pictures. Uh, well, three total films on our slate. So, uh, but, you know, that one picture I've been being very quiet about the past couple of years, we might start being really vocal about here later this year. Very good. Uh, so, uh, which any, one is that? It's any plans for an ultra short edition in VHS of the torture? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> ask. Any uh, plans for an ultra short limited edition of the torture on VHS? Ultra well, short. This this might be it. We'll see okay. how it goes. Uh, I'm, I really like the the package art. I'm excited. I didn't think I would, we would ever get to do um any kind of release for it physically, but you know it's a self distributed project, so we got to you know you know do what we can. It's also an easier project to push than some of our other uh, things, like you know the Hellbound Laments isn't really a, a short film. It's not really a, it's not a feature film, but it's a, just a eclectic yeah. concept of several ideas that yeah. uh, that are inspired by clive yeah. uh and you know i can't really do a release for that so they just stream on youtube but i put the trailer on the on the vhs for the torture and yeah, ice yeah, yeah. is a very it's more of a niche audience than the torturer uh and i i honestly think that that's just a better movie the, the thing torture. i love about uh your hellbound laments videos is uh really that they're a, a kind of an anthology of little short films and uh, yeah some of them it's like i want to see the long feature film of this like when there's like people fighting with katanas and yeah. fighting over a box and stuff like that and yeah, that's I, like reminds me of that uh those matrix cartoons you know that came. those out. are cool yeah, yeah. The, the animatrix yeah, yes i like those yeah. I actually recently found my pitch deck for the Hellbound Laments. I was working on with somebody from France, um, but I guess that he, he just lost interest. But I found my old pitch deck, and there they I I was trying to model it after like Tales from the Crypt. So each episode mm -hmm. was its own yeah. standalone. Where eventually, by the time you get to the final episode, they all 
all the characters kind of crash into each other. Um, but I, that, that's rights issues at the wazoo. Yeah. So right, I'm not, you I'm know not ready how to that's like. that. It's just fan films. I love them though, but yeah. Uh, but but fan yeah, films are something that you can't charge money for. That's right. true. Right. Go tell that to Friday the Thirteenth Vengeance people. Uh, oh yeah, or they Star don't make Trek a Ax- Axanar. They don't make a dime. They... So the thing about Friday the Thirteenth, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're more of a fan of that than I am, but it's like so. Th- there's different owners for the Jason character and the Friday the Thirteenth franchise, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the issue. Well, because Paramount owns some of them. Uh, I want to say uh, Miramax owns some of it. Um, the rights have been, it's all splintered off like crazy. And uh, I want to say their lawyer, Larry Zerner, who was an uh, actor in <clears throat> part three. He's the character that gives Jason Voorhees the hockey mask. He grew up to be an entertainment lawyer in copyright law, who is our entertainment lawyer for copyright on our big project <laughs> right the, right i know um, the one you're talking about yeah. you can't talk about it right now yeah um but anyway i was talking to the producer so like i said we might be start being real vocal about it here real soon um but yeah he went and he helped uh clean up the the copyright issues with the franchise and now that's why they have the tv show coming out uh and uh supposedly a new movie i don't know but oh, I know the like show's it. coming out, and I think the TV show is supposed to follow Jason Voorhees as a child instead of it being like the old TV show where they were a series of vignettes uh, every week, a new episode, a uh, new. That story TV character. show had nothing to do with Jason. It was like a, it was like cursed it was like a objects. warehouse full of like old cursed objects. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit like that um, movie, Needful Things, or something like that. I suppose. Kind of, as a store, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I remember but, but watching... We've gone way off the rails here, talk, yes. going into the into the <laughs> deep end on Friday the 13th. This is not our area. Sorry, Ryan. So, <laughs> Ed and Nina, do you guys want to jump in with one of your favorite movement, uh, moments of 2023? Sure. Well, for one, you know, the Hulu Hellraiser on, you know, the 22nd was cool, but then... You know, we dropped our first interview with the Russells then, but then on the 20 in 2023, we mm-hmm. dropped our Keith Thompson interview. That's right. Like five oh, months yeah. ago. Yeah. On YouTube, on your yeah. Ed Martinez YouTube channel. Correct. That yeah. is we a put great, a lot of work into that one. <laughs> a lot of work. Yes. Nina, Nina has learned a whole bunch of new editing skills. Tell yeah. me a little bit about how long it took to get that done and uh, how you guys got uh, Keith Thompson to come in. Um, I think, uh, well, I forget how, how you got in touch with him, Ed. Oh, well, uh, he's obviously, he was the artist, you know, who designed all the Cenobites for the new Hulu Hellraiser. And he worked closely with the Russells. And because of my doing the interview with the Russells, then I was able to get in contact with him. And he, he gave us some great images. Uh, He was very, very generous. Anybody who hasn't gone to my YouTube channel yet to see this interview, please go do it and subscribe <laughs> yeah. yeah and we we also wanted to interview um martin emborg and because that didn't work out for the time and we martin emborg is the guy that designed the new box for the right so oh he, i see worked, they worked together so martin uh um, that box is amazing i know yeah, a little bit so i was i went to his website where all the original designs were and edited in um on ours, a sequence of it going through all of its stages so that, you know, if you like, it's nice behind the scenes. uh, And he told us about how he made a clay box early in the pre-production stages so that they could have a physical object to work with, you know, for photographs and storyboarding and things. Yeah. So Keith was in addition to doing all the, the artwork on the Cenobites, he was, he was manipulating the box on video. Like, so if we do this, it'll do this. Yeah. He was principally involved with helping to design and work out the, the box i was really happy to see that video um because there was a lot of behind the scenes imagery that was supplied to you guys by keith thompson and a lot of stuff that uh, people who just saw the movie would never know like you know the the mother cenobite pictures and the designs of all the cenobites and things like um i think it was called the weeper cenobite that would have it was supposed to originally have 
uh, this transformation that would like split its limbs into like extra limbs. And then it would supposed to be like walking around on all those limbs, chasing people. Yeah. Like and, the thing or something, it was going to yeah. break apart and like know, a spider yeah, or a scorpion. Like a monster, yeah. you know? But That's so cool. they got pretty far along in designing and building it, but then it got cut. Yeah. yeah you, you guys always talk a little bit uh, also about, uh, I think it was the house, uh, that movie. The, the night, night house. house. Yeah, the yeah, night house. The yeah. design of the night house. Yeah. I, I need to go back and watch that movie. That was good. Night house? Yeah. It yeah, was yeah. almost the Hellraiser movie. They, you know, that's, the right... Yeah, that's what everybody says. It's, uh, David David Bruckner directed that one also, didn't he? Yeah. Right, yes. right. Yeah, the night house. Correct. And the same writers, yeah. the same two writers wrote the new Who Hellraiser as well. Right. Yeah, they're a great team. I'd love to see more work from them. <laughs> yeah, we all would. <laughs> yeah. Specifically Hellraiser. <laughs> yeah. Of course, so, and, I couldn't see any of it, but I loved just having something to do with it, being involved at all, you know, for my interview. And, you know, just being able to listen to the audio version is great. Hmm. Uh, the mask, for example, the Cenobite mask, and uh, how you guys have stuff here from the original design, where the mask was supposed to have on one of his index fingers and one of his hands, it would be turned in almost like a tattoo gun kind of instrument, right. which he would use to write things on people's skin. And he's got all those like, looks like scribbles going down his chest uh, on a couple of flaps of skin. And those names were names of uh, special Sculptor. effects artists, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, That's you know, cool. a lot of times in in movies, you know, special effects people will sl sneak in their names on the signs or, you know, on a business card or something that, you know, it just goes by real quick and nobody really notices. But, you know, it's one of those little – Manco, I'm sure you know that. You know, your crew probably does stuff like that on films. <laughs> if they have, I have – well, they – I've never noticed, but I'm aware that people do that. But on my stuff, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Have you ever <laughs> looked at my video yet to to see this stuff? Man, I no, I, I haven't yet. I still have to read just the story you emailed me. I've been so busy. <laughs> <laughs> I I just it's it's insane. Like I said, I I didn't realize buying a house was going to. Uh, take over your life yeah I, oh yeah oh it, yeah speaking of which have you I mean, had to do any sort of major fixes around the house because i'm going through one of those right now i just got a hole on the ceiling of my uh living room that i have to fix fortunately not yet i yeah. haven't you know we just had a big freeze so we had to uh cover all our outdoor uh, uh water fa faucets and then uh right you know so we they don't to, freeze over and we had to keep all our stuff going it's still cold here but it I mean it's uh you know, I sur I sur successfully protected the house during the freeze. Uh, so you're a home groaner now, Joe. Yeah. yeah. But no, that, that was the worst four months of my life was trying to get into this house. And before that, you know, we were running a campaign for Death World, uh, trying to raise money for it. And we were able to raise enough to get credentials uh, for like our LLC and stuff like that. Um, but then, you know, we and then amongst you know doing the indiegogo campaign trying to raise money for the project buying a house and then kino then the kino short film fest happened and then they were like oh we need to you know have you do this popularity contest on your social media and just blast votes like crazy and they kept interviewing me but you know i <laughs> if you watch any of those kino uh short film fest interviews with the other filmmakers everybody's like in a really bougie area super decked out has nice hair nice makeup <laughs> expensive clothes and then i'm in my laundry room wearing my freaking hellraiser hoodie just like i like to make movies and i'm independent I, we're i and i'm like oh my god i look like such a slob compared to everyone else in their super fine dining short films and i'm over here trying to make a schlocky thing called death world is <laughs> kino lorber did this or what? no it's not i i messed up and thought it was kino lorber when we first started so we kept tagging them and kino lorber had a chime in saying that's not us yo kino's kino means lens in german it's a very common word so oh no. i see um, so yeah, it's a different company called Kino, K-I-N-O. Oh, is that wow. still ongoing? The uh, the Kino Lorber uh, mm. short film festival that we can vote on? It's no, not Kino, it's not Kino it's, Lorber. It's not Kino Lorber. No. Uh, and, and thankfully, it's over. 
<laughs> right. Okay. That lasted uh, way longer than it was supposed to. It took over our lives, but I mean, yeah. uh, we ended up you having. You guys three... became uh, finalists on that. Yeah, two of our. Well, we were the only team people. I was the only person to submit three short films, or just more than one short film to begin with, which they thought was uh, odd. But we had a uh, uh, the torture beyond dusk and uh, the death world proof of concept beyond dusk didn't do too hot, uh, but. Uh, Death World and uh, The Torture both made it to the finals, which we didn't know was a thing until the start of January, and that took over our new year. What and, state is this in? Uh, maybe L.A., maybe in California. I don't know. Either way, I was I was trying to win a cash prize of five grand so we can five G buy uh, feed people on set. But if we don't win, I guess everyone has to starve. And that's cool. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm making meat bologna and bread. I mean, oh, I yeah. know what it's like, you know, being an independent, you know, we, we would call it instead of low budget, we would call it no budget filmmaking. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But um, so, yeah, we find out January 31st who wins that competition uh, and they're going to be announcing it in Vegas at the Directors Guild of America. Uh -huh. Like it's a venue. That's just a few <laughs> days from now. Yeah, and they're like, "Come on out and buy a ticket, and you'll you'll All be right. treated like whatever." And I'm like, "I'm tired of this. I have I I can't be spending money on going out and acting like this. I need to you know actually stay here and do this." It's like people like you and me. You know, we want to make films. We like the process and going and trying to hobnob and schmooze and you know go to Hollywood parties and stuff. That's not what it's about. You know? No, but that's how you acquire your money. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and my problem is, is that I hate people. So, right. <laughs> you know, you got to find somebody who's going to be your front man, kind of. Right. <laughs> but uh, no, that's good stuff. But I'm glad it's over. And uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, it it was it was quite stressful actually, staring at those numbers. <laughs> I'm for, sure. Yeah, we voted yeah. a bunch of times. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And where, where can we find that interview that they did with you? Is it on oh, YouTube? Uh, no, it's on the Kino uh, webpage. There you go. Um, let's Share see the here. Share the link. It'll be in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when Jose finds it. S send that to us. Um, yeah, send that to us and we'll put it in the show notes as well. Yeah. You know what? I think I, golly, the thing about social media is that like it, everything gets buried. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan, do you want to jump in and give one of your favorite moments? Yeah. So uh, our interview with Bernard Rose. I mean, that that was kind of one of our highlights of 2023. That was a lot of fun. That was really neat. And um, and special thanks to Ian for helping us set that up. Um, Ian's kind of disappeared off of Facebook now, but uh, but he was uh, he he started out the year kind of really big into. Uh, into the Clive Barker podcast and helping us out. And now he's kind of moved in different directions and stuff, but uh, yeah, he's got some very, very big projects that he's trying to work on uh, in his hometown. So we'll see how that goes. I wish him yeah. all the best, but yeah, we, we had almost two hour interview with Bernard Rose and it was a lot of fun. That was one of the moments that I also selected for 2023. He was very generous with his time and he was really easy to get on the show it was yeah. interesting because he talked about stuff that, you know, I had no idea about. Like, for instance, his connection with Tony Todd and helping Tony Todd to find his son. You know, making right, yeah. document film about that. They went yeah. to Skid Row in L.A. trying to locate his son, who unfortunately had some issues. And and the and, the, and the, the the legal monetary problems with trying to make a movie version of the Thief of Always, right? I mean, it's like, oh, that makes total sense that yeah, they shopped it to people who got super far along the process, and they've right. shopped it to so many different companies now that in order to make that movie, you would have to you would have to sign they all of those different people would have to sign off on it, and so it would be an impossible. It would be a super expensive movie now to make because yeah. Of because they would have to pay off all the work Disney, that's been done. I remember at one time Disney had come to Clive and talked with Clive and Clive had shown them all his paintings. And, you know, it looked like at one point that it was going to be, you know, possibly Disney. But 
Right. I remember that. Uh, that was many years ago. Right. I also like that Bernard Rose gave us a little glimpse of what his midnight meat train would have been like uh, yeah. that never happened. So that was that was fascinating stuff to uh, to hear. He was really, really good. Great. Uh, yeah, I, th I thought so, too. That was that was pretty fun. So I think right now you guys got almost all of my stuff. I just have one more thing on mine. Um which uh, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and do some more stuff. Anybody got any more stuff to talk about? Um, last July, I was in a short film for uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Natasha Pasquetta has is a short film called uh, Daughters of Evil. Oh. Which is, uh, I play the camera operator and it takes place <laughs> in the 1960s. So I'm using what one a of those stretch. Old... Yeah, so... it's, it's, it's typecasting. Yeah, right. So I'm using one of those really old, uh, like television, uh, station, like newsroom cameras. Uh, it was actually pretty amazing to use, but, uh, what happens is that this talk show host, uh, has this band on his show called the daughters of evil. They perform a live and it's like this, these three girls that are super, uh, 1960s out with the hair and the outfits and the instruments, even it looks really cool. And evil. And <laughs> yeah and the the music is very flowery it's very evil in lyrics but flower power and sound like him, and uh they accidentally summon the devil and <laughs> he comes up and he puts on a show for the camera and then oh, he shoves his hand through the through the tv host ripping out his insides oh and, cool <laughs> um and then they play another rock and roll song and it's really cute <laughs> I love it. I'm looking at pictures of it right now, and uh, I see the the, the multi-armed skeleton and the possessed ladies on stage, and oh, yeah. uh, the aesthetic of it is very '60s, right, with all the wigs and stuff. Oh how, yeah. How long is it? How long is the film? Like ten minutes. Ten minutes. But you know, she also did. Uh, she's done a couple other ones. Like she did one called. Uh, I can't remember. And they're still. <laughs> And they toured with that also as a show or was it just for the movie? She goes and she does. No, she takes the short film and then mm -hmm. she goes and she does shows where they play the short film. And then her band plays after the film. And uh, like uh, you seen Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost? No, yeah. I haven't. No. Well, well, that one, there's a, a, a three piece all girl rock and roll band who are witches. Yeah. And uh, they do, you know, pop rock. And they have this song called Hex Girls. Well, uh, Natasha's band covers Hex Girls, and it's really fun. And and they... you mean Scooby Doo, the officially licensed movie with this? No, I'm talking about one of the animated cartoon movies from the '90s. Right. So it's, it's... real. It's not. It... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's a thing. I've got a a, a little. Uh, synopsis of it here. It says, in a sleepy Texas town in the 1960s, a girl group formed in their parents' garage in order to find the perfect band name. The girls consulted a spirit board. They got a bitchin' name, Daughters of Evil, but they also got possessed. So <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. A decades later, a YouTuber accidentally summoned the band back to the land of the living by playing their album backwards. The Daughters of Evil are currently promoting their short film and live performances now. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you were in it. I'll yeah, I'm in it. <laughs> You're the cameraman. Yeah, they that was a fun two days worth of shooting. I I show up for a few seconds, but I had a lot of fun on set. And uh, I, I seen Natasha's other short films, and uh, they were a lot of fun. And she used to work for Fangoria when they were working out of Texas. Um, so yeah, she's got she's got some uh, clout in the area and uh like i said if you ever come across a short film i don't know if it's on youtube but it's a lot of fun it is it's a, it's, it's a hell of a lot of fun cool spirit board is it is it a copyright infringement to say ouija board <laughs> uh actually there's Maybe. a whole joe bob segment about the ouija board uh i don't Think I think the it, name is owned I've, like by Parker Brothers or something. Yeah, I've something. never I've never heard somebody use the phrase spirit board before. I've heard spirit I, board they, before. It's out being called that in the 18th or 19th century, you know, the early days of when they were a pla, pla, they'd call it a planchette, you know, the thing in the mm. middle. Yeah, oh, yeah, they, that's what it that's what it's called, yeah. Yeah. Over the um, years though, it's kind of evolved. I mean, I I yeah, like I said there's a Joe Bob 
episode all about he talks about the Ouija board and who owned it, who created it. Mm. And um, but it's I don't horrible. know. So they're they're kind of dressed like uh the Ronettes or something like that. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um what all about right. you, Ed and Nina? Do you have anything else about 2023 to talk about as a favorite moment? Oh, well, we got our we released that Doug Bradley right under the wire. Uh, we oh yeah, the, the yeah. Night, too, Doug Bradley with all his brown hair. <laughs> and I Tiffone, yeah. And Tony Tiffone with his, his uh, cream color suit or tan suit. Yeah, that was that was great stuff. When Tony Tiffone was still a young man. Yeah. <laughs> I I I, w I have to say that it was it was a little shocking to be watching that and all of a sudden they pan through the crowd and Guar is sitting there in the crowd right. yeah. and holding the camera so yeah that's, yeah. Yeah. that's actually, right actually you know the convention I mean you know the 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 time we were on the podcast and we talked about the convention where I met Nina that's the convention oh wow yep. And you know I, we have more footage. We just didn't put it all up. We only put like ten minutes up right now. But if you know you were to continue to watch my video, you would see the costume contest and Nina in the costume contest as Penelope. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, I love that costume, Nina. You you did an amazing job on that. <laughs> and Doug Bradley was one of the judges for the contest. Oh, I, cool. Yeah. It, 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 you guys put this up three weeks ago on YouTube and. Um, it was at the Fangoria Weekend of Horrors in Chicago, and it was Halloween of 1992, right? right so yeah. I think Hellraiser 3 had just come out. Right. And I think Doug Bradley was uh, flying in from Toronto after the premiere in Canada, and he was late because he missed his flight, and he just comes in. My favorite thing is he comes in into the stage. I think it's Tony Timpone that's, like, introducing him. And he comes in smoking one of his Marlboros, and he just throws it on the floor, steps on it on stage, and says... Just throw it on the floor. It's God's ashtray. Right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he was smoking those English cigarettes. Dunhills. Those Dun yeah. Oh, Dunhills. Right, yeah. yeah. But was that 1995? Pack. Two. 92. Yeah. 92. But the pack looks exactly like Marlboro because it's a red pack. Because they had yeah. just <laughs> wrapped Hellraiser 3, and you know the, the print was being screened, premiere screening. And so, you know, he was going around promoting it. You know, and this was one of the first conventions that he appeared at. I had right, that written yeah. down. I had that written down here. Uh, the Keith Thompson interview and the Doug Bradley Fangoria Weekend of Horrors in my top five moments. Oh, and yeah. Um, yeah, Gwar came out of nowhere. I was like, holy yeah. crap. <laughs> I mean, Gwar used to appear at conventions like that. Like they weren't going to perform or nothing. They would just hang out and be in costume. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sign autographs probably at a booth. Yeah. And there's a couple Timpone... of guys, uh, Go ahead. That, that are dressed as. Um, Bill, uh, Bill and Ted, they're so sitting right up with Guar. Oh, oh okay. okay. It, it's more... kind of sad to see Guar now because two of those members are dead. Oh. Right, right. Yeah, I um, I particularly enjoyed this because he goes on to talk about stuff like uh, how the surgeon scene was never filmed and all that stuff. And now, right. of course, I rewatched the scene and I understand why he was saying that because when you look at the scene that came out in that Arrow video with a surgeon scene it's not complete <laughs> it's not complete and the only parts that you really see barbie and doug uh, in costume they're just like a few seconds out of the whole scene right so i could understand that they probably just shot that on set and they were like let's workshop this let's see what, what we can do basically it's just they walk in through a door with their surgeon gowns they don't even have masks on because putting the mask on pinhead would not go well with all the pins right but, and then he's got those uh that splotches of blood going down his chest you know those two lines to indicate that the wounds are underneath the gown but basically when you look at that it's really just a few seconds of footage that they shot for that scene with barbie and doug so i understand why he would and always the still say, photographer caught it That's yeah it. and it's like yeah. and that kept coming coming up in all sorts of laser disc editions <laughs> and dvd editions in the back but i understand why he would legendary. say yeah because i think the only other parts where you see the doctors with the surgeon masks and all that, those are different people. I think they were just extras or something. Um, and they're dubbed over. So I don't think it was uh, Barbie and Doug that actually were there without makeup, with the scrubs, with a little, you know, scarf on their head and the little. Yeah. So, yeah, for the for Doug, it was probably just a five minute thing on set. So I, I could imagine he forgot about that and he didn't even know. 
anybody had edited that scene together. But you know, I do have the laser disc of the second film, and it it is just like the VHS. It's on the the back of the laser disc too. Yeah, 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 yep. 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 yeah. All right. And- <laughs> what else so anyway so that's two things from ed martinez youtube all show. right please go there sign you know subscribe leave us a comment <laughs> yeah and we we will uh we have links there in the show notes if you go to the show notes you'll be able to click on that and find the youtube channel and to those individual videos too and yeah. we got yeah we're gonna keep on putting up more so keep yeah. coming back so uh what else do you have Brian. Artist. Oh, I have. Um, so show off your stuff volume two. So our very, very first show off your stuff, we did God, well, probably in our first year. Yeah. And we did we did it over like was it uh what do you call that? Google, Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts, and the quality was terrible. Yeah. And you was. could barely hear anything. Um That's but, right. so we did a new new show off your stuff thing and it was kind of neat it was fun to do that again so kind of in the spirit of that i want to show off a couple of things that i just got sure Um, i got a first edition uh uk of the damnation game uh russell was selling online so i got this uh autographed i think it's autographed yeah autographed version of uk version of the damnation game and i also thought i was buying the cd of being music but turns out it's a little promotional card for being music so i guess the hunt the hunt continues on that what's being music it's a cd it's kind of like clive barker's playlist of songs that he listens to while he's painting oh Oh. but it's a cd and so i thought that's what i was buying but it turns out i was getting a promotional card of you know oh. of it instead that's autographed where'd you find that also from russell oh that's cool <laughs> yeah i think that being music came out in the 90s maybe like, i think 90 yeah i think that's that's around yeah i think it was 99 and if you're curious about what's in it i think you you would find some fred astaire the way you look tonight you'd find uh um a piano concerto in C minor from Rachmaninoff. You'd find uh, Stephen Sondheim show tunes <laughs> yeah. like Joanna from Sweeney Todd. And you would also have like Diamanda Galas singing yeah. Dancing in the Dark from that Lord of Illusions. And, uh, you know, Magic Moments from Perry Como, a whole bunch of like classic stuff that Clyde Barker liked to listen to. Right on. The back cool. Takata and Fugue. <laughs> uh, sure. I think he has some King's College Choir Cambridge uh, tracks here as well. It's heavy on the classical stuff, too. Nice. Um, so the hunt continues, huh, Ryan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I still want to get that CD. I thought that's what I was buying, but uh, oh, well. This is yeah. cool, too. Uh, yeah. Um, and um, I, I can, I can uh, defer just if anybody else has another one. The show. Well, that, I do that auction that. Uh, the, oh yeah, the multiple Hellraiser and you know, new Hellraiser and old Hellraiser items you know that were auctioned recently. Right. Yeah, that had yes. the torture pillar from Hellraiser three, didn't it? Well, it that, sure did. That auction, I don't know when that one was, but that was a video, that a YouTube was, video. Yeah, that, that was twenty twenty three, I think. Right. But uh, yeah, that was a cool video. No, I mean, mean, 2022, I think. Even though I couldn't see it, you know, I could hear it and I knew, you know, what they were going for and stuff because I know Eric Fisher used to own that torture pillar. And so he's the one that sold it to the prop store. And then that guy brought it, you know, a malfunction. (laughs) That's his YouTube channel name. name. (laughs) Oh, so he had a hell of a time getting it in his house. (laughs) It's so huge. I, yeah, I understand that. I'm looking at pictures of it right now from the Prop Store <laughs> website, and uh, holy crap, that thing is enormous. And it said here, I don't know how much he went for because I don't have an account on that website, but it says estimate was twenty thousand to thirty thousand dollar final bid price. So I'm not sure how he paid for it. This well, is the actual pillar from the movie. It yeah. is. Yes. 
and it's I mean, you know it's made out of a combination of wood and latex rubber on the outside the surface is latex rubber that is got foam backing you know foam filled backing and yeah. you know they built it in in North Carolina on location after all the pieces were molded and cast and sent from England so when they got to America, you know, they had to build the wooden frame and put all the pieces together and paint it and everything. And I know that there's a another section that had the hole in it for Doug to stick his face through. You know? Sure. Yeah. 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 But there is one version that doesn't, you know, have the hole that's all completely, you know, doesn't have a hole in it, you know. <laughs> right. I think this yeah. is the one that uh, that they sold. Is the one where you can see on one of the sides, Pinhead is crossing his arms, standing up, and he's got his eyes closed. Yeah, and, that's uh, always yeah. the way it is. I mean, yeah. even you know, NECA had the the action figures originally, the first series, and it, when you bought each one of the first series of action figures, there was a piece of that torture pillar, so you could build it, you know, put it all together if you bought all the series. I remember, I have one yeah. piece of that because I I bought one of those that came with one piece, but I never got the whole collection of figurines. Uh, in the auction, this one says that the, this large pillar is the only full-size version created by special effects coordinator Bob Keane for the film. It is sculpted from foam with a wooden core, painted dark blue, green, and bronze color, and mounted to a rolling wood base with a removable metal dowel for movement. Visible in the pillar's ornate facade or pinhead and the anguished faces, faces of his many victims, as well as a complete lament configuration puzzle box embedded into the pillar. Uh, following so, production so was that 2023 or 22 no this was 2022 but i think right okay. uh what what you guys were talking about was that big one in london right the big auction from prop store that happened yeah, in london i picked it up from los angeles like in other words they have a location in la a warehouse i guess where if they do an auction and somebody you know from la is putting something in the auction they may not need to ship it to london you know yeah yeah but uh yeah they they did sell some stuff recently they they sold like uh the roland voigt's uh bloodied centibite prosthetic suit uh, of a voigt's character on hellraiser from hulu movie they sold i think the siamese twins from bloodline they sold one of their suits yeah the leather costume of like from the waist up right yeah. and then i think they also sold the body of asphyx the centibite um, right. The one that gets stuck in the doors in the Hel yeah. Hulu Hellraiser. Yeah. Uh, they also sold that one. So yeah. it was kind of like stuff. a puppet. Like they, they had like a dummy puppet version of her for the scene, you know, where they didn't want the actress, you know, to be stuck on the floor in the door jam area all for hours. Makes sense. Another thing that was sold that I think we never mentioned was they, they sold, um, I think it was still in 2023. I think it was the uh, screen matched animatronic engineer head that is just like you just see the eyes and the plastic, you know, skull and then the teeth in the jaws. And uh, it, it said here that uh, this head was made by Bob Keen, image animation, fiberglass skull with cat like eyes, menacing yellow sharp teeth, and a movable lower jaw. So it's yeah, just basically. Yeah. That was sent to this guy who does prop restoration, Tom oh, yeah? Cena, and he restored it beautifully. If you go to his website, you can see the before and after pictures where now it looks like it did in the movie. Oh, wonderful. I guess he sculpted the whole latex thing to put on top of the skull and make the skin. Yep, that that's their company. They restore old props like all of the original props from bob burns you know some of them from star wars some of them from american werewolf in london stuff like that you know he's can you tell me again the name of the artist tom spina his company is called oh yeah spina designs right and his he has a company called regal robot oh i see oh i'm looking at the restoration of the engineer right now awesome huh i think this is not the same thing as the animatronic head I think this oh, is something different. Yeah. yeah. But I've got this one as well. I'll put it in the show notes for people to see anyway, because this is a fascinating bit of restoration that uh, takes care of this historical character for the franchise. So he restores the these props. Yeah. Tom Spina. The, like, you know how something like an American werewolf in London, you know, werewolf or whatever might be rotting and falling apart. Yeah. 
he puts it back together with you know special techniques like museum restoration techniques and you know he has restored the american werewolf in london werewolf the american werewolf you know jack you know the the puppet of jack the the zombified mm -hmm. buddy of his you know he's fixed all those Oh I have the God. disgusting. Uh, I have the disgusting uh, cocoon from Sergeant Kabuki Man in YPD and Tromeo and Juliet, and it's falling apart. Maybe oh, I yeah. should send it to him. But if to you repair. want to send him pictures, and you know, discuss you know it, and you may want to send it to him. Yeah, I mean, like it's the legit screen use prop that they used on set in New York. So from the yeah, I mean, wow. you, want, you want to save these things? These things are historic items, you know. Right. I mean, wow. I wanted Harry Balls, but someone else got him. <laughs> he's the Harry Balls from Sergeant Kabuki Man. He, or the yeah, he's the the penis. Oh. The I wonder if someone owns a puppet. I wonder if someone owns the deformed penis from Terror Firmer. Did you guys <laughs> get these in an auction or? <laughs> no, you just have to find some people that work at Troma headquarters that just happen to have this stuff, and they're like, "I need to offload shit," and they give it to you. Oh, nice, nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting. I was looking through Tom Spina's website. He's also restored the Hellraiser mask for the Barbie Cenobite from Hellraiser yep. 3. Yep. And he restored like a um a display for like a pinhead makeup and the little me mechanical head of the robot from Hellraiser 4, the oh. one that solves the box. And it blows yeah, up. that exploded. And explodes. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I always cool. thought he kind of looked like the the T 1000 kind of yeah a yeah. little bit yeah, in between that and short circuit johnny five yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> but tom spina's yeah. company is amazing i mean they are you know very connected with star wars and the, his company regal robot they release licensed you know limited edition items like they did a chewbacca head you know they do all kinds of stuff Nice. This is what I love about these episodes that we bring you guys in because I always end up finding out stuff that I, I completely missed and <laughs> And this is good stuff, man. This is like, I had no idea Tom Spina Designs had all these like Hellraiser props that he could look at. Yeah, so definitely I've just put, added. Put that into the show notes so we don't lose it. Yeah, I already and did. Star Wars stuff. And you all did? Movies. Yeah. Think, you know, like 13. Oh, I put it on coming up next. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, that's we'll not where it, it goes. He's, that's right. He's restored stuff like this monster suits, you know, from 13 ghosts and, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know. And he does special you know like you know how man caves are you know like somebody is rich and they want their den or their man cave to be outfitted with a certain theme he does mm -hmm. like star wars themes like he did one where they made the whole man cave room with a you know projection screen and everything look like the death star like all kinds of you know the little tiles from the death star gotcha all over the walls and the ceiling and the room you know he just you, you whatever you want if you're rich you know he'll build it for you i've got one more thing in my list uh which is recently we finished the parker cast interview book that you can see behind me on the on my background image congratulations on that y'all that i cannot wait to get yeah. a copy of that thank you thank here, you here. Here but congratulations. it was really important for me that, you know, Ryan and I hunkered down and we did some uh, Zoom meetings together and we went through the final manuscript and we edited and we fixed some things that were still uh, little things here and there that we had to fix. And it was very interesting to go through the Kindle process of publishing a book. And I couldn't have done this without Ryan. Th thank you so much for guiding me through this and helping me out. And I'm really happy to say that uh, we already started sending, making some orders for the book for some of our backers. Um, it looks backers like this from 2017. Yes. Yes. How many was, years? How many years? Um, six years, yeah. but it's a 400 page book. It's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, it's going to be a hard cover. You can see the, the cover behind me right now with a Clive Barker, uh, design that he grac graciously uh told us we could use. use yeah which is supposed to be the de de devil lude's father uh, yeah. from nightbreed oh there he goes and um supposed to be his dad who i think impregnated a nun according to nightbreed chronicles and then oh how nice little lude <laughs> got born i think and um uh, 
Yeah. So it's got a lot of stuff. It's got a lot of interviews. We selected bits of interviews that we did that were related to mostly Nightbreed because this one is more Nightbreed oriented. And uh, we got it divided in several sections. And I don't know if you want to talk about those, Ryan. Uh, well, we're going to, yeah, we're going to get into the book when we talk about the, we're going to, we're, we're going to talk about the book in, in okay. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But that Save was one of the book episode. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, but this not was the book episode. My... We're going to talk about the book. <laughs> I'm only yes. kidding. I'm, I'm yeah. like Larry. But this was definitely uh, a highlight of the year because it was a project so many years in the making and it was a very nice, interesting learning experience on going through Kindle process, uh, to put this book out as a hardcover. And I'm really proud that we've accomplished that. And I couldn't have done it without, you know, Ryan, Raul, everybody else who, you know, helped us uh, transcribe this stuff. Rob, it was a lot of, hour, yeah. Rob, of course, Robbie, yeah. he's in the, he's in the cover of the book here too, as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. In the picture that we took at uh, yeah. Texas Friday weekend with Clive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we already started sending some books, but uh, you know, we'll talk about that more when we get to the end of the episode. Yeah. And um I'm so to get my hands on that. <laughs> one one more that uh, that I have and this is not like one of my favorite moments or anything but this was sort of a this was sort of a poignant moment I guess. It gave me almost gave me a heart attack. I got a Google alert that uh, Clive Barker died and it was the uh, South alarm. African soccer coach Clive Barker. Oh my god. Yeah, and so it's like okay, well now I guess I'm my not going to be getting stopped. <laughs> yeah, now I'm not going to be getting any more of those uh, Google alerts about the other Clive Barker anymore. But uh, it's still kind of sad because I, you know, over the past decade, I've kind of learned a lot more about this guy than I ever wanted to, just because <laughs> because the he has the coach? Sa- yeah, because yeah. he has the same name as as uh, you know as the so person. Coincidentally, that, you keep finding yeah. That. yeah yeah. There's a, a theater. A theater uh, playwright right. he, and artist as well, who's also right. named he, Clive he wrote Barker. The, wrote wrote the book Theater Games. T h e a t r e. I think Clive mentioned something, yeah, maybe on an interview one day that. One yeah, time... I remember Clive saying something about him being, you know, mistaken for a professor or something. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, and, and if was... you look at the publication date on that book, it's like Clive isn't old enough to have written that. Right. Of course. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, that one time this artist was complaining something to him like, hey, you know, I'm I'm Clive Barker, you know, <laughs> after what? the Books of Blood came out, yeah. something like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I guess sometimes this kind of stuff happens. Yeah. It's yeah. never happened. Well, you know, well, actually, someone gets famous with their own name and there's other people. There's well, a Joe guy. Monday, that's uh, not my real name. So <laughs> there's there's a guy named um, named Ryan Danhauser that runs a, a Star Trek fan club. Oh really? Oh yeah, and for a while he was the number one result on Google for my name, but not anymore. I I I totally squashed him. You showed ah. that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Clyde Barker's better than Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> There's a movie maker with the same name as I have on IMDb. He's a Portuguese movie maker. And uh oh. yeah. So that's funny. Because sometimes <laughs> is very common too. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I have several on IMDb as well. I go I by Monko because uh, Joe Wright directed Pride and Prejudice and Atonement. Oh, yeah. yeah. So It just go... outed your real name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's people that already know it. There's I, also I like know a... it because I had to send you stuff for the Kickstart. <laughs> so Manko is a, is a pen name? Uh, it's, yeah, yeah. Pen name. Isn't... Pseudonym, pen name, moniker. Nom de de <laughs> also known as... <laughs> Isn't it also like uh, the man with no name? Isn't that supposed to be some sort of thing that there's a Joe Manco? Yeah, uh, Blondie. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Clint Joe Eastwood Blondie. in the trilogy. Yeah. So That's there you a, go. Is, yeah. Loads, did you did you know about that when you picked your? Uh... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my grandpa and I used to watch a lot of westerns. Uh, there before... you go before he passed away uh but no yeah we watched we, i grew up watching westerns and everything and uh you're a son of a you no know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just uh a man with no name felt uh yeah. uh appropriate for me given the life i had growing up i'm no longer that depressed but <laughs> the name sticks 
So emo. <laughs> oh fuck you. <laughs> ah. uh, my favorite uh, line from one of those uh, man with no name is that that guy when he's in the bathtub. I think his name is Chuko or something. It's That's like, a great scene. The guy, the guy is like. Eli There's Wallace. a tension moment, and he's like, "Oh, you know, he's. Got, I got you now. You're in the bathtub, and you're naked." And then he's got a gun in there. A shot comes out from the foam. He's like, "If you're gonna shoot, shoot. Don't talk." That made Catalina. She spit out her drink, laughing so hard at that scene. <laughs> that's, that's great. I love it. He never. He's never without his gun. Yeah, it's a good scene. I love those movies. That's like Han Solo and and uh, and uh, Greedo. Greedo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. He uh, shot first. Han shot first. <laughs> yes. David for the Star Wars episode. Didn't he <laughs> yes. shoot only? Yes, he did. He was the only one who shot. Yep. That's yeah. Right. yeah. The original movie. You know, just, it was a two hit. You, I <laughs> two, you hit the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he hit his face on the table. <laughs> I've got a Greedo right here. We're about to wash it off. Does anybody right. have any other moments from 2023? Or... <sighs> um... I'm sure awesome. things happened to me, but it was just a roller. Man, 2023 was, I couldn't tell if 2023 was a good year or a bad year for me personally. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, maybe it was a good year. I mean, things have been a lot better since uh, moving into this house. And then all oh, these yeah. Clyde Barker releases came out. Our Joe Spinell plush finally showed up from uh, Severin. And uh, did you guys ever see that thing? No. What's the name of the movie again from Severin Films? Oh, it's uh, The Last Horror Film. The Last Horror Film. Oh, I that actually, sounds familiar. It, that's not that's right. With Caroline Monroe? You've never seen The Last Horror Film? Is it the one with Caroline Monroe? Uh, I yeah. Think that's, I think that's false advertising. What are you talking about? What, what do you mean? How could it oh, possibly mean, be As though the there is no film? such thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's a gorilla shot. It's like film. the it's like the never ending story. I'm suing uh, you. You just yeah. hate hey, I hate know. those movies. I <laughs> know, uh, man. I got the never ending story one, two, and three in like uh, VHS, and it does sound it does seem. Oh, there it is. It's Joe Spinell. Oh, yeah. My luck dragon. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> Severin had the had a last horror film, Maniac Two, Love to Kill, a <laughs> slipcase, and it came with a book and. Came with this giant ass spinel plush. Yeah, anyway, this this was how many did they make? A plush? A, a Joe spinel? Yeah. Are you serious? Showing the doll. Oh, yeah, this thing's God. huge. Is Do you know sweating? how many they made? <laughs> Probably a thousand. Okay. Wow. This thing sold out fast. He kind of looks like the master from Manos, the Hands of Fate. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. He was in uh, um, Star Crash also. Oh, Joe yeah. Spinel. He's also in Rocky. He worked with Lloyd. Yep. Oh. And and in Taxi Driver. The Godfather. The Godfather. Yeah. The ninth uh, configuration. That's cool. Which... I didn't know that Severin yeah. would make uh, things like that, like the plushie. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, ninth configuration should be a Hellraiser film. I like mm. that film. That's a weird. Oh, film. it's a beautiful movie. Oh, talking about that element configuration uh, from Hulu Hellraiser, uh, Etsy already has copies of that coming out. Really? Yeah, oh. people on Etsy have been putting out copies of the box, and some of them are like copies of like the square box, and they have other shapes like oh wow, other shapes that the the box turns into in the movie. I want uh, those. Yeah, check it out on Etsy. I'm, can I, you put I'm sure they're not in, licensed. Can you put some of those in the show notes? Sure, I I can direct you to that. It's not licensed though. That that's the only caveat. That's okay, that's okay. Yeah. I, I would I would like to have uh, one of the the laments. Uh, from the new Hellraiser made by uh, Pyramid Gallery, but I don't think Max is making boxes anymore. So, well, the last he's... time I talked to him on the phone, he said that he was just mo making mo main... more stock. Well, the the uh, the standard lament configuration, whether it's the music version or not, and um, you know, like in other words, he wasn't making all those various designs anymore. Mostly just yeah. the one or two sure. designs. So... the top sellers. The ones that are, I think, the easiest yeah. for him to do. Well, yeah, his website's not up anymore. Is it? it? No, I wanted to get a couple boxes for my crewmates. Oh yeah, uh, but I, I, they're the site's down. So. No and, kidding. Yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of, I was pretty sad. 
Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I hope it's just temporary. Yeah, yeah, we we uh we I tried to talk to him about joining us on an episode a while back, and it didn't. He didn't uh didn't respond. Didn't, yeah, didn't respond. probably busy. Oh, that guy's um, super busy. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, yeah. So you have an honorable mention, right, Ryan? Oh yeah, I just wanted to to say Martin Mercer is the wrong side of Hollywood. Oh yeah, that yeah, I, great. Yeah. I'd like to hope that maybe we had some influence on him saying, hey, podcasts are cool. Maybe we should do a podcast. I have no idea. That may not be the case. You know, maybe they just wanted to do it because they hang around and chat about stuff. And maybe they just thought uh, we should make this a podcast. I think, <laughs> yeah, we were one of the first podcasts that came out uh, when the whole thing was blowing up. I mean, People keep talking about Mark Maron's podcast, WTF. It's like, oh, you guys were the first and whatever. Like, And they're like, yeah, we've been uh, doing this for 12, 13, 14 years. But it's like, yeah, we've been doing this now for 12 years. And uh, yeah, thanks to you, our, Ryan. We I just mean, started our 13th yeah, year. Yeah, we just started our 13th year. And and this book is uh, almost like a crystallization of all the stuff that we did so far. A small part of it, actually, not all, but, but a yeah. big chunk of it. Um. And it's kind of a celebration of that. So I'm really proud that this book is coming out. And who knows? Maybe the future will have another book. We'll see about that. Well, one uh, more. Book. I don't. I don't know about that, man. One yeah. more book to talk about, though, is uh, in the box set. You know, the 4K box set. Phil and Sarah had a little book, right? Yeah, they did. I'm going to grab it while you guys talk. Well, I can tell grab me about it faster. It, tell me about it, Ryan, because I can't see it. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's called Age of Desire. Here or Ages is. of Desire. Yes. Oh, you look like I've you're got... holding nothing, Jose. Yeah, Jose is invisible. <laughs> I've got to uh, blur my back. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, wow. That's so, nice. So, um, yeah. So it's a it's got a kind of a nice glossy cover. Uh, it's it's all put together by Phil and Sarah Stokes. It's got information about um. The various Hellraiser bo uh, movies. What about photos? And it's got a lots lot of, photos. of photos. Yeah. Tell me about them. Well, I'm looking at one here, which is a, a onset picture of Julia on the mattress. It's just a picture of her from the back. And uh, you can see all the little bones in her spine going up. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. You've got to um, destroy that mattress. <laughs> are these <laughs> Are these photos that you think are... You know, production still photos like we've all seen a bunch of times in magazines and stuff. Or are these well, like there, there, there is some of that, but not all of it. Yeah, so these are kind of behind the scenes rare photos as well. Like that. They have some of that too. Yeah. Like they have. I'm looking. I was just showing off the Doctor Chenard kissing Kirsty wearing um, Julia's skin, for example. Oh well, that's Looks a behind like, the scenes for sure. For sure, we got some uh, some pictures of manuscripts of the script being written by Clive. Yeah. You know some pages of that. I'm just showing that to the So camera. I think I think some of it is stuff straight out of the arc of the archive, right? From the Clive Barker archive. Correct. Nice. Would, so, yeah. so. Here's one with the uh, chatterer two or the chatterer with the eyes. And so uh, this this book is different than the book that came with uh, the Scarlet box set, right? It is. Yeah, nice. which I was surprised. I thought it would be the same book, but it's not. That, it's a totally nice. different book. Here's a, a fun that picture. That is of, great. That is so great. The no Phil and said. Sarah are knocking it out of the park. They yes. are as yeah. as usual. And here's one yeah. with uh, from Hellraiser Three: Hell on mm -hmm. Earth. It's got Tony Hickox, rest in peace. Um, I say, we lost him recently. With yeah. Joey from the movie, yeah. um, and uh, Pinhead behind both of them with his arms stretched out, doing the uh, <laughs> "I am the way" the pose. I am yeah. the way. I yes. love that scene. You know, and and actually. Speaking of Phil and Sarah, one thing that doesn't, I mean, their Dark World book was amazing, <clears throat> but one thing that maybe doesn't get praised enough that we are these playbooks, right? These, these things are incredible and they're such a good value. And I think that uh, I would, I, I'm really, really looking forward to more of them coming out. And, and they're I'm sure that available, the ones in the past. Yeah, are still yeah, you can get them on on the on the archive website. And I think that um, and I and they they didn't put I don't think they put out any in 2023, and it's probably because they were so busy with these you know making books for these releases and stuff. Other books, and, yeah, and probably with Dark Worlds, you know maybe uh, um, 
Dark Worlds didn't come out in 2023, right? I think that was 22. So, well, they got a so, lot yeah. on their You're plate, right. and they're just yeah. knocking it out of the park. Yeah, but um, so I, that's one thing I'm excited for 2024 is maybe more playbooks coming out. I'm hoping so. I didn't know Phil and Sarah. If you if you're yeah. listening, um, that would be you know that that's that's one thing I'm kind of looking forward to more of the playbooks. I think that would be well, neat. I think I'll be buying a bunch of those here soon. <laughs> so Joe, you didn't you didn't know I, about those, huh, Joe? No, I didn't. But uh, those are pretty cool. I thought I was going to have to buy a bunch of copies of Incantations, but now oh I just no, buy... and those. Those are great because they always, when they would come out, they would come out in a pair. So they would make one that was previously unreleased, and they would make a second one that was like one that was for, that was released before. But all in the same book, right? Two plays in one book. What the hell are you? No, they each one is a separate book. Oh, I... did you say you're muted? Okay, I'm uh, muted. I was saying yes, please. The next one would be great if you guys put out the Secret Life of Cartoons by Clive Barker. Oh, because yes. that would be terrific. That's the only one that I have that was sent to us once as a PDF, and uh, and this one is pretty funny, and uh, it it's about a cartoon rabbit that comes back to life, comes to life, and um, you know, basically. Some people like speculate. Roger Rabbit. Like yeah, Roger some people speculate that's like that. where Roger Rabbit came from. Yes. Yeah, some people speculate that. So uh, it's about a Roscoe Rabbit that comes to life and uh, in the real world. So it's it's different. It's not what you'd expect from Clyde Barker, but it's also very witty. Yeah, like Oscar the Bunny from Walt Disney. Mm. Oscar <laughs> the Bunny. I don't think I know yeah, that one. It was before Mickey. Mm. Was it Mortimer the Mouse? No, it was it was a, a bunny, but uh, they stole it. The, a different guy took the rights to it, and so well, UB that, Works. What's that? UB Works. No, he created Mickey with Walt. Oh, that, that's right, that's right. Or that that's that right. movie with the invisible six foot tall rabbit Harvey, isn't it? Harvey. Right. Oh, <laughs> Jimmy I don't know Harvey. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> Yeah. Let's not get started on the puka. Otherwise, mm. rabbits and monsters have always been kind of like connected connected i guess in certain ways with yeah. uh, certain horror stuff well there's the in the puka. twilight zone the movie there's the giant crazy scary rabbit that pops up you know yeah and oh, donnie yeah. darko yes yeah. Donnie darko. so yeah. let's get let's get into the book uh let's get into the book discussion Ryan. yeah uh, yeah so i mean and that's kind of what our kicks uh, not kickstarter because we're not doing a kickstarter this year but our fundraiser uh fundraiser 10 this year half of it is going to be we're going to ask you to buy the book please nice. at this time i'd like to show our gratitude to our infinitely patient 2017 kickstarter backers uh from the um the fundraiser four uh fundraiser for blood money it was called we appreciate your faith and continued support and we're so happy we can finally ship these out to you and now we'll thank you again David Anderson, uh, Rob Reidenauer, Eddie Haleman, John Von Pei, uh, Connie Laggy, Phil and Sarah Stokes, Paul Audino, Bradley Gartz, Demetrios Lacomentes, Matthew Aaron Burns, Urs Rohrer, Scott Rowell, Rowell, Scott Rowell, sorry, Ben Warren, Daniel Elvin, Marcus Williams, and David Sharp, who was in the next Kickstarter the following year. Also, of course, we want to thank uh, Don Bertram, who has sponsored us since then and before then, uh, every year. Thank you, Don Bertram. Buying our book will will be a, a big part of uh, of supporting us, and the other part would be our uh, we've started a Patreon. Oh, oh nice! Really? Yeah. You always said Woo! no Patreon. <laughs> I, I did always say no Patreon because I always looked at our our um I always looked at our our expenses as like this is how much it costs for a year and Patreon is like a a monthly thing subscription thing yeah yeah subscription but you can go like one dollar a month low low end for some people if that's what right yeah and so I took all our expenses and divided them up into monthly and I figured out you know the bare minimum to sort of keep the lights on for our podcast. Our expenses are sixty-three dollars and eighty-nine cents a month. Oh, 
Yeah. Well, I think y'all can raise that via Patreon. <laughs> yeah, and we, and we we always did in Kickstarter, and and honestly, you know, after like four years of doing Kickstarters, um, our podcast host got sick of us trying to pay for our all of our um all of our hosting in advance. They said, "Hey, we're not allowing this anymore. Stop doing that." Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Why? I don't know. I think I don't know. Maybe they re- want to reserve the rights to change their fees. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you pay in advance, it's locked in. But no. Oh, yeah. yeah I okay. See. I see it. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. buying a magazine subscription for life, and then when yeah. their, price, their their expenses go up, they can't. Up when it. I was a landlord, I was always super grateful when somebody would pay their their you know a year's rent in advance. I love that. Yeah, it sounds like a the way to do it. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I don't but know. But anyways, that's cool. So, you know, just like Monster Party, we're, we have Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a Patreon, and um, it's we right now, I, I just put it together late last night. Um, so it's just, it's kind of just in its infancy. Um, well, if but... you want to offer special things to the Patreon members, <laughs> you know, special material like Monster Party does and other people do, I would be willing to give you some of my, you know, archive if you want oh that would oh, be great oh well, that'd be great we appreciate that well and we and the way it's set up right now if you if you subscribe at the five dollar level uh gives you access to additional content so we've got a um we've got a our youtube channel so there'll be some videos on there that you'll only be able to see at the five dollar level um at the ten dollar level uh you um you'll get to pick a topic We've typically usually done that for certain Kickstarter, you know, backing backers. But at the ten dollar level, you could pick a topic. Maybe join us if you want to on the podcast, um, and randomly might be mailed something. Uh, and then at the fifteen dollar level, that's for advertisers, right? You know, so anybody that wants to advertise with us, you get uh, advertised on the podcast and side banners on the blog and stuff. Nice, yeah. Sounds fair. That's what we've done. That's what we've got so far. So that plus buying the books will really help us out. Buying the t-shirts is nice and everything too. That that helps a little bit, but buying the book helps a lot more. Really? I think buying the t-shirts is kind of cool because I mean I, I, I love having the t-shirts, but it's really just kind of a cool more of a cool factor than like a financial thing. How uh how much are y'all gonna be selling the book for? the the book is for the for the hardcover it's fifty dollars and for the kindle one is 25 and on apple books it's 25 uh, the digital are 25 yeah i, I mean yeah and I, we got I, a separate I, isbn for each one of those okay so we had to and yeah so we had to pay for all of that is there but, a cheaper option on the book as opposed to just hardbound like a paperback. Yeah, that's what I was. We were saying like the Kindle is twenty five, and the and the Apple yeah, but you got to have a Kindle e-books. device. What about a paper or a phone? You can also use the Kindle app on your phone or on your tablet. Uh, yeah, you, you don't have to have it. a Kindle device. You can just do right. it on yeah. your phone or yeah. Nowadays, yeah. you can just install the Kindle app, and you can see the pages flip over when you swipe, you know, on the pages and all that stuff. So it's almost like you got a real book. I don't even yeah. think Kindle makes devices anymore. We have one. Uh, yeah, I think they might still do something like that. Yeah. Okay. Now they've tra- transitioned more to like the Fire tablets yeah. and stuff. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I I never bought a Kindle. I just have the app on my iPad. But mm. we still have the option in the future if we decide to do that to put out a paperback. Um so that that's something good. that we still haven't really given much thought yet because we want to make sure that people get the hardcover yeah. first because and, and, and honestly, I think it's a I'm superior kind of, version. Yeah, it's and and it's just my own prejudice. I just don't like paperbacks. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Wow. I'm a, I'm a sucker for little mass market paperbacks, but uh, I, nobody I am not because they because I've moved a lot and they they get the t- covers torn off and I don't yep. know. Pete, no, uh, that makes sense. Like, that's why he came out with the script, you know, from that's Blood true. Paperback. Yeah, a mass market and a paperback. Yeah. Um. So that's you know that's the book. It's over 400 pages. And we split it into various sections. And I don't know if Ryan, you want to get into those sections? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can. What about the introduction? Who was the, oh, the introduction was written by Ann Bobby. 
um, That's right. which was really Morty yeah, from re- yeah, really nice of her. Um, and, nice. and and for people who don't know, Ann Bobby was uh, the one who came up with the phrase "Occupy Midian." Uh, it was it was kind of neat because when we were um, when we were at the the convention, it was the um, God. What was which convention was that? That was in Charlotte, North Carolina. North? Mad Monster Party. Mad Monster Party. Yeah. So I was in line to get in, and it was like the VIP Friday night. Like so, the very first place I went to, I just bolted over to Ann Bobby and Craig Sheffer and Russell Charrington and Mark Miller. They were all like right next to each other. So I they, I went there first thing and I did this and I was nervous because this is the first like live in-person interview that we'd ever done. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And but you had I, a I, tape recorder with you? Uh, it was a digital one with a an SD card in it. Yeah, a so Zoom I, too. I, yeah, so I, I bolted over there and I did this interview with him and, and Craig Sheffer said, you know, Hey, if if uh, if things keep going like this, people are going to occupy Morgan Creek. And Ann Bobby had been working on, you know, with Occupy um, Wall Street, and she said, "Occupy Midian." She goes, "Oh, that's a great idea. You know, I that's my idea. I take ten percent." <laughs> yeah. And then later on, she repeated it to the panel at the movie, but she said it as if she was saying it for the first time. Yeah. So everybody was like, all these people were like, oh, I heard her say that, you know, I heard, we all heard her say it. And it's like, actually, she said it to me first. It was <laughs> on proof. It's on it's the on podcast. Tape. You're like yeah. Forrest Gump. You're in those places where nobody knows it was you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, she wrote the preface to the book. Um, and uh, uh, both Ryan and I have uh, two separate introductions where we talk a little bit about, you know, how we got into this whole thing and the podcast. And then, um, so that's, there's, there's, I think five sections. Is that right, Ryan? Yeah. Part one is everybody has a secret face. <laughs> uh, that's where you can see our introductions. Um, and a little bit of a recap on uh, when Nightbreed was 27. And I made a big blog post talking uh, the for part one, which is a, a recap of, you know, how the, Nightbreed come to be and you know yeah. what happened with Occupy Midian and how many versions are there there's another uh, blog post I think that you have in a different section but part two is uh, called "Someone Something's Breathing There Under the Cemetery and it's Cabal and the Theatrical Experience and so this one talks about interviews right with uh, people who were in the movie or people who yeah. are related to it so more focusing on the theatrical movie and and you know what what it was like during that time that's right you know yeah. we got interviews with Simon Banford Nicholas Vince uh Hugh Ross who played Narcisse um you know Russell Charrington uh, Cliff McMillan people like that um, and some really rare ones too right like um um Sean Asasi? Yeah, yeah, Chris McCorkendale, but also, um, oh gosh, Catherine what was her name Chevalier. Cash, Catherine Chevalier. She played Rachel played in Rachel, the movie. Yeah, all these people were there for the 300th episode, weren't they? Well, not Rachel. But no. most of them. Most, most of yeah. them were right. Yeah, Donna Saucy came. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah, and then part three is occupying Midian, the fan movement to restore Clive's vision. So that was kind of about about the Occupy Midian movement and how you know getting swept up in all of that and and uh, yep, which you was crazy because some... we we were a brand new podcast and we we kind of were just barely understanding what we were doing making a podcast and all of a sudden, you know, we're getting swept up in this this whole big fan movement and and uh, and. Getting, which you know, resulted I, in the release of the new Nightbreed. Yeah, know? and getting and getting interviewed. I got interviewed by Entertainment Weekly, and you well, did. Like there were, yeah, there are articles in in um, articles in in Empire Magazine and stuff. Do you have those issues? <laughs> That's yeah. Uh, well, Entertainment Weekly was the that one ended up just being online. I was kind of hoping, but <laughs> that is so, insane. That's so yeah, fun. In that part three, we got interviews uh, that you've recorded at that Mind Monster party with uh, Craig Sheffer, I think, and uh, yeah, and Bobby Russell Charrington talking about the process of of touring with the movie and making the Cabal cut. I think Jimmy Johnson also, who did something like editing the he, Cabal he edited cut. the Cabal cut, yeah, with Russell. Yeah. and you got and then uh, Russell wouldn't stop, and he made the ultimate yeah. Cabal cut. Yeah. Well. 
Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. That's, and yeah, then well, Michael Plummetes and Christine McCorkindale. And then, you know, this, this thing came out and won a Saturn award. So, yeah, a lot of good what stuff. What did? There. You mean the director's cut of Nightbreed? The director's cut won a Saturn award. That's right. Uh, yeah. Not the Cabal cut? Uh, not the Cabal cut, because that was never officially released. Uh, well, it, it was. Commercial. Yeah, the, the the 2017 one was officially released. That's true, through Seraphim. The one yep. that you guys yeah. did the commentary on? That's yeah. right. Then we have people who helped us out, who you know joined us on the episodes, like Crystal Rain and people from... You know, uh, people from uh, the internet that were assisting us with this effort. We got part four, which is shouting for joy. The director's yeah. cut. And this is after yeah. the director's cut was announced. We have a the little goal thing. is complete. Yes, yeah. we have all this stuff talking to Cliff McMillan from Shout Factory. Um, you know, and Mark Miller and Russell Charrington and all these people. Oh, Andrew Furtado, who was the guy yeah. who edited the director's cut along with Mark and Clive. And he uh, has a little diary uh, uh, editor's diary where he uh, supplied that to us. He had this on his website at one point and then his website went down, but he allowed us to reproduce his uh, director's or editor's and it's got, diary. It's got his notes from Clive and stuff in there too, which is pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little thing, uh, a little thing I think that he said here was, uh, like, for example, you know, things that uh, Clive would say he wanted to change, like when the guy is trying to ignite the berserker with a flamethrower and the flamethrower stops working, we need lots of sound effects to amp up this moment. Yeah. Click, click, click of the flamethrower yeah. failing to ignite as the guy tests the trigger and him saying, shit, 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 really play it up. And uh, so <laughs> things like that, that he, he wanted people to put into the movie. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got little introductions from Thomas Nagovan about you know when the, when the director's cut was uh, being posted and we uh, have a part five right part five is called find me heal me save me from my enemies the future of nightbreed where we talk a little bit about where it could go from there you know yeah and and we were writing this book since 2017 so there was a lot of speculation and and back then the even back then the nightbreed tv series was gonna come out any moment now you know and and yeah um, right yeah <laughs> We keep doing little addendums to these articles, uh, 2017, 2018, 2020, yeah. you know, and you wrote this great, uh, article about all the, all the Nightbreed versions explained, which was something yeah. you posted in 2017 in our blog, where you explained pretty much everything there is to know about the theatrical, the horror hound work print screening, the cabal cut, and the seven versions of the cabal cut. What's the horror hound? Is that the convention horror hound? Yeah, it the, was the so first at, time they, yeah. they screened it, right? So at, at Horror Hound, Mark Miller just grabbed all the videotapes that he found in Clive Barker's closet of the of the work prints and screened those. And so it wasn't it wasn't any kind of coherent, it wasn't like a coherent cut of the movie. It was just a bunch of work prints and he screened those at horror hound, but it was like a way for people to say, Hey, look, there is actual extra footage. And I found it. Yeah. And some people died more than once in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and then, and then later on when Russell Charrington and, and, um, and, uh, and um, Jimmy Johnson edited together the, that footage into the uh, DVD of the, of the theatrical cut, that's when they started the very first version of the Cabal cut. And then part six talks about uh, dead things that don't have enough sense to stay in the ground, rejected yeah. Nightbreed stories. Yeah. So th this section, we focused a little bit on the uh, uh, Midian Unmade book that came out, uh, edited by Del Howison and Jonas Sees. And we open up with a review and then we have both of our stories, um, that Ryan wrote one story for that. I wrote one story for that. Never made it to it. It was rejected in the yeah. open submission. And Roger Boys also has a poem about the Nightbreed in here. And uh, yeah, so we have that stuff at the end. Uh, yep. My story is my... called Diaspora. And your story, Ryan? Jerry's Left Hand, which was cartoony and overwritten. That's oh, what you were told? <laughs> That's what you were oh, told? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh dang that's that's rough 
I remember yeah. it had the the big hand of of Baphomet on somebody's back like a backpack. No, hey, that's Ralph. Yeah, that's, that's Ralph that's and that's Jericho totally Squad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on Jericho Squad, our RPG game. Maybe, so you know, a I lot of stuff. You think of that would be a cool product. Somebody could make a literally a backpack that's shaped like a big hand. Oh, oh yeah, man. <laughs> just like the masks yeah. of of the big praying hands that would be on your head. Oh yeah. That's oh yeah. Idea. Yeah. To to be a Nelly and Act. Right, right. Yeah, that would be that'd cool. be terrific. And uh, okay, so what else do we have to talk about, Ryan? Um, I gotta get back to. Did you all see that? The book uh, notes. We'll put the links for the hardcover Amazon uh, page and the Kindle Amazon page, and also the Apple Books link, uh, where you yeah. guys can get that as well. And the Patreon, we because we you know, and so and we're gonna and we'll have sort of a um we'll have sort of a a fundraiser page where we can watch our progress and see if we're going to hit our our goal of the $68 a month. I support some uh several readers on Patreon. Several. Yeah. And I promise they're not all naked ladies, but uh <laughs> No, yeah, it's like... only naked ladies for me. <laughs> there you go. So we got like riff tracks and stuff like that. You can you can uh and yes, like you guys were saying earlier, yes, they do offer different tiers Special. of subscription yeah where you can get different um bonus you know material get access to different material before it hits youtube or the podcast or even behind the scenes stuff and basically <laughs> what you're helping us with is is hosting for you know hosting for our website hosting for our 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 uh podcast um paying the fee for the uh, licensing of the podcast on a host right yeah, that's what I mean by hosting for the podcast, hosting. and then yes. and yeah, and then host, and then our Zoom license, and our domain names, and D and D Beyond, and Roll Twenty, and um, what's that? What's Roll Twenty? It's Roll Twenty is the is the the mapping thing that we use for for uh, so that we can play you know remotely, so that we can play online and everybody's on the same map. Playing oh, D&D. for the game. Yeah. 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 You can control your little character in the map and move it around. So that, that's yeah. fun. That adds a little bit to the video of Jericho Squad yeah. RPG. Uh, my my brother Rob controls the map. Uh he he helps with that. He's the tech guy. Yeah. He's the techie. Mm. So what's coming up next? Uh what? coming up next. Well, so... did y'all see that uh Encyclopocalypse released uh did a new release of the toll by Mark Miller? Oh, they no. did. A hardback or something? No, it's a paperback, and it's very affordable now. I think it's like twenty-two bucks. That's oh. cool. I haven't. Oh, purchased mass it yet. market size. They made a mass market paperback for that. That's great. Yeah, I, I haven't purchased it yet because money. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been buying it's... all these uh, Blu-rays. So Jose oh, and this... I got uh, got early copies of it, and we did some. Uh, we did some. Um, QA for that book when he was writing it. Oh. Yeah, we provided some lore that he had questions about. Uh, but that that book takes place between Hellraiser 1 and Hellbound, correct? Uh, I think it's I think uh the it's, no, it's no, it's between uh the Hellbound Hard and and Scarlet Gospels. Something like oh, that. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But cuz he they decided he, they decided yeah. to pick up the story for Scarlet Gospels after you know, Hellraiser. The whole thing, Hellraiser, the events of Hellraiser and Hellbound. And Lord, and and Lord of Illusions, too. Yeah, because no. th there were some issues because, like, the movie Hellraiser has stuff happens differently than the book, The Hellbound Heart. And so we're like, hey, you know, your book has references things from the movie and the book. So you got to pick. Right. You yeah. know, like Kirstie is different in one version than the other. In one yeah. version, she's, she's not even Larry's daughter. She's just a co-worker that likes Larry, Rory. Instead yeah. She's a friend, Larry. yeah, in the book. Yeah, she's yeah. a friend. And she has a so, different last name. She's not, you know, she's because she's not his daughter. She's yeah. not Kirstie Cotton. She's Kirstie something else. I don't know. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. nice to support a Psychopocalypse. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, I just found it here. And you, you're right. It's really affordable. It's $9.99. No, for $9 the is cheaper than size. I thought. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. and another well, thing. Out in 2023 was Pete's ghost book, right? All our hearts all are our, ghosts. All our hearts are ghosts. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 
That was that was a really good one. I've got it too. That's a good one to mention. Thanks for bringing just, that yeah, honorable I, I, mention. I got it too. I haven't read it yet, but I bought it. It's uh, sitting on my compilation file. of Ryan. I have your blanket too. <laughs> your blanket. I have the same exact blanket on your bed. Oh, yeah, oh you can right. See nice. The yeah. same exact one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just we're saying what we have too, and it's cold. Fun. I we had an alarm going off today because it's minus forty outside. Wow. So th th this that. alarm alarm was going off all morning and woke me up at like two o'clock oh my gosh Jesus. so coming up next we're gonna have the hellraiser quartet of torment coverage and interview um, yeah. so we're gonna be talking to someone who did a feature uh for that particular release which is gonna Cross be very fingers, interesting fingers crossed Cross yeah. fingers and then we're going to keep on doing more news episodes, right, Ryan? We got more stuff yep. that we'll eventually talk about. Uh, Jericho Squad 77 will return. Yes. You know, we, the last episode was pretty much uh, fixing the horrible state that we were left in at the end of our last combat, uh, <laughs> where we were pretty much all like down for the count. Yep. Um, but we're back and uh, there's going to be more stuff for that. We're gonna we're gonna get into more A, A through Z commentaries based on the you know uh, recommendations of Clyde Barker and the A through Z of horror. We're gonna be talking about the Evil Dead series, which yeah. is gonna be really exciting. You know, I'm sure you guys are gonna want to join. Oh, in that's yeah. funny because I was gonna send this to y'all last night, but I was like, oh, right. that's not Clyde Barker related. I won't send it to him. But now that you say that, I'm gonna drop this into our chat. And nice. it's, uh, it's uh evil dead possible timelines legend oh and it has all okay. the comic books and everything and how it spawns off of it and i noticed which i've oh. never noticed before there is an ash versus candy man oh i've heard of that oh a comic book oh. i think right yeah that a comic book? yeah i don't have that but uh, i oh. probably need to get that at some point so wow. yeah i'm i'm about it and i need it in my life there's yeah yeah, yeah. E Evil Dead is rough to try to figure out, even like because even after Army of Darkness, it's hard to figure out how Army of Darkness fits in with Ash versus Evil Dead. Have you right. seen all, all of the TV show? Yeah. Well, it depends on what cut of Army of Darkness you're watching. If you watch the theatrical cut, then the TV show, you know, goes right into the TV show. Yeah, if except you watch... he's not. He, I don't think he's missing his hand, right? Yeah, he's missing his hand. He's just got his. But he doesn't have the cool robot hand. Well, I'm sure that didn't survive the test of his alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that thing I just dropped in our chat that has a uh, all it might be a little pixelated, but it's yeah, you know, it shows check it out various timelines. But he never I thought talked it was about like, cause... oh yeah, you know, I went back in time and saw knights and stuff. He yeah, he does. He Ash doesn't... versus Evil in Dead the TV show. He talks about that. Yeah, I, he does. I don't remember him talking about that. Oh, I, I watched that show a lot. It was amazing. I, I've okay. never watched that show yet, so that's Me something either. I really need I to get into. I, it's really good. But I'm a big fan of the movies, like from Into the Woods, the original like yeah. student the short, film, the short film, until you know the the last movie. So I've watched all of that. I didn't yeah. really get into the TV show, but uh, I'm sure the movies are going to be a hoot to talk about. Oh, the show is going to be the special effects guy yeah. from the first movie used to live in San Francisco, and he gave me a VHS tape copy of Into the Woods, as well as all these other short films and comedy stuff that they used to do with Sam Raimi. And, you know, Yo. they, they made Three Stooges type comedy stuff. And, you know, they made a an Indiana Smith or, you know, something that was like a takeoff on Indiana Jones. Jones. Yeah. Oh, that's that's interesting. I've seen Into the Woods on YouTube, and I'm like I said, huge fan of uh, you know the first movie, the second movie, and the third movie. So all that stuff, and the remake too. The remake was pretty decent. I've I've got a bunch of you know rubber heads and you know bodies and stuff that are from you know those movies. You know, Evil Dead One, Evil Dead Two, Evil Dead. I Three, want one. Darkness. <laughs> I'm selling. Wow. Them. I'm, I'm, Nina is taking pictures of them you know over the weekend and we're you know sending them to different people we know who buy these things you know yeah. that belongs in a museum <laughs> <laughs> i mean arguably i could say i'm i'm sitting in a clyde barker museum right now but and so yeah. are you <laughs> so yeah. hey joe since you guys moved uh i remember you guys used to have this room where you guys had all the stuff in a corner and all the shelves and all the clay yeah 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 we have uh oh. our that's our did altar you, did you move all that stuff to the new house too did you set it up yet of course yeah it's all set up and decked out but it's 
That's the first thing he did before he set up his bed. It was. <laughs> Catalina put the bed together. I put the altar together. I only felt that was fair. <laughs> I'm really happy about my new house, too. It's got a huge basement that, that's mostly finished. There's a part that's unfinished, but it's mm -hmm. closed off by a door, which is where you see the, the, the hot washer and dryer and stuff. But this finished version is all wood panel, just like you have back there, yeah. Joe. And uh, I yeah. have a little room. Uh, which let me see if I can show you guys just uh, where the magic happens for me. Yeah. Uh, let me take a look and, and pick a different background that I can show. Yeah. How do I do that? Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm going to grab my camera and show you around. That's see that wooden bowl. That's your Boston bowl. That's that's my Boston bowl. That's <laughs> oh, what yeah. Ryan gave me uh, when I got married. It's got the little boo. Clive Barker drawing. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was carved by an artist in Alaska. Really? Like a salad? Yeah. yeah. We got, uh, I've got a whole, a yeah, whole bunch of stuff. It's, it's a huge mess right now. Sorry He's about that. Yeah, our altar, it's a lot. It used to have a lot of knickknacks on it, but now it's all Clive Barker. And uh, I just acquired, we just acquired a book um, from the Imagineer series. Yeah. Uh, we got uh m we got the letter m i traded a, our sfx guy he had he had it actually straight from clyde barker's house um and then uh i had a real four of the movie the house had dripped blood on celluloid so i felt like it was an even trade <laughs> you mean in 16 or what it was on 35 35 millimeter wow really yeah i traded it to my friend uh matthew what's for, he gonna uh, do with that, it does he have a 35 projector no, no, no. He just has an insane collection that's way bigger than all of us combined, most really? likely. Because I have yeah. stuff that I want to sell. I have 35, too. I've got a reel of Rocky. Oh, I've got a reel of Sleeping Beauty. You have Rocky. How much yeah. are you selling Rocky for? I don't know. I don't know what these things are worth. I'll give you 25 <laughs> bucks for it. <laughs> I, I will I will buy Rocky from you. <laughs> So I, I, I hooked up my phone here to the, the boxing movie. I'm talking about Rocky Horror. Rocky IV? Horror. Horror. Oh, Rocky Horror. Oh, oh Rocky Horror Picture about, Show. I thought you were talking about Stallone. Yeah. yeah. Ron is <laughs> showing off. Uh, his, yeah. Ron so here's, here's off his office. Yeah. What, all this stuff piled neatly together. Jump yeah. tribes and here's you guys. posters. I've got a bunch and, of trailers too 35 and trailers. this i just got for the podcast actually this is a hard drive bay so it's got 16 terabytes in there and i could fit two more hard drives in it oh yeah yeah and plus a ton of video game consoles joe nice. you gotta have a lot of storage space for all your 4k and 6k and 8k footage right me oh yeah and our, we have a um, we have i don't know how many hard drives we have that are all like 10 to 12 terabytes yeah, and, uh, they they house everything. Oh, and, uh, and well, they're all getting they're, they're all getting filled up. Yeah. Hey, Ryan, what's footage. what's the pattern on your curtains there? It almost looks like Pinhead. It is not. It's just they're just curtains. Okay, that's a <laughs> low pixel resolution. Yeah, I used to have yeah. some anchor and chain curtains when I was young, and you know it was it kind of reminded me of Hellraiser chains. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And I then we're also I need oh, a frame. here's some old eighties Dungeons and Dragons toys over there. It's hard to see, but oh, I see. Some of those you painted yourself, right, Brian? No, those are just those are toys. They're they're rubber ah. action figures. They're plastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you have some little figurines that you painted yourself, yeah, right? Yeah, those are over here on miniatures, the metal. Oh, looks great. I see all the Godzillas up there. Yep. And uh, so coming up next, we're also going to be doing more Boom Hellraiser comics discussion. We've been going through those, and it's been a very interesting um, dive into the lore that they created for the Boom Comics series that came out a few years ago. And uh, we're actually now at a time where uh, where Pinhead is, uh, or rather Elliot Spencer is now um, gaining more power, and things are escalating where we just covered episodes 13 through the 16th of the Hellraiser Boom comics. Yeah, I listened to it. Please keep on describing the artwork and the Thank you. The oh, yeah. And the the you know the uh the what's it called the um you know the compositions and stuff like that. Of the pages. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah we'll discuss we'll uh, describe that. 
So, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's more stuff to come. And it's 2024 now. So we're going into this new year, new season of the Hellraiser podcast. And we want to thank all of our guests who've always been here with us, like you guys, like Ed and Nina and Joe. Looking forward to that torture uh, release. Yeah. So that's yeah. going to be really important. And and uh, Ed and Nina, please keep putting up more material on your YouTube channel. We always like to support that stuff. Yeah, the second part of our Russell, you know, interview, the Russells, we have a, a part two coming out. Oh, yeah, that'll be great. All right. Amazing. So thank you again to all our backers who helped us make this book come a reality in our Kickstarters. And uh, yeah. we look forward to having the actual hardcover in our hands soon. So Me it too. seems like the orders that we've been putting for proofs and for orders that we already sent to some backers, it's saying that it might ship in February. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think yeah, they still have to, it. yeah. So, so they still have to print out the copies and bind them, I guess. So um, it yeah. says they'll be shipping around February 20. And, and then so we haven't um, gotten our physical copies either. We haven't actually been able to hold, hold them or else we would be showing everybody on our yes. cameras, but yeah, we got some authors editions being sent to our backers and we got some proofs that I ordered for me and Ryan. Um, so we're still waiting on those to arrive. Uh, so next month people are going to start getting that stuff. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Th yeah. Thanks for having me on y'all. Oh, uh, this was fun. great. It's always, always great, great seeing y'all. It's always Thank good you. to support North Texas uh, independent filmmakers like you, Joe. Um, Thank nice you. Nice to hear from you, Joe. You too, Keep Ed. Hey, thanks, on. everybody. Keep thanks, thanks Joe. On. Thanks, Nina work. and Ed. You're welcome. Rock and and roll. this podcast, without having... Oh, Whoa. no. I just messed that up. Didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing this for 12 years, you know? Videos, <laughs> and this podcast, having no beginning, will have no end. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker Podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.